Previously on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Slayer Fest 98. Into every generation, a slayer is born. One girl in all the world. A chosen one. She alone will wield the strength and skill to fight the vampires, demons, and the forces of darkness. To stop the spread of their evil and the swell of their number. She is Buffy Summers. Who burned down her high school gym and then moved to Sunnydale. Where she met what would be her new chosen family in Willow Rosenberg an iconic lesbian, also a witch, Rupert Giles, a hot daddy librarian, Angel, her super hot vampire boyfriend, not to be confused with her other super hot vampire boyfriend, Cordelia Chase, the one and only queen of Sunnydale High and our hearts, and Xander Harris, who is a guy. Meanwhile, in his Brooklyn kitchen, Ian Carlos Crawford started a Buffy podcast with Matthew Rodriguez and Joe Reed, originally called Three Slayers No Waiting. After just one episode, it became known as Slayer Fest 98. After some shuffling of the hosts, the podcast was led by Ian alone. But never fear, he picked up plenty of great rotating co-hosts like Kirsten White, Adam Sass, Zachary Patton Garcia, Dana Pickley, Anthony Oliveira, Philip Ellis, and Kimberly Ann Southwick and had great guests that Ian won't shut up about, like Stacey Abrams, Trixie Mattel, Summer Bischel, Ming-Na Wen, Charisma Carpenter, James Marsters, and Tom Lank. As the Scoobies went through changes, so did the podcast. Buffy would graduate from Sunnydale High School and blow it up, creating something of a pattern, before heading to college, Heaven, and the Double Meat Palace. Ian would also change accommodations and boyfriends a few times before finally learning the dark arts of podcasting remotely. After seven long, arduous seasons of slayage and discourse, we find our heroes bravely declaring their one last stand against the vampires, demons, and the forces of TV podcasting. And that's what you missed on Glee. Welcome to Slayer Fest 98. I'm Ian Carlos Crawford. I'm Adam Sass. I'm Kirsten White. I'm Dana Pickley. And I'm Zachary Patton Garcia. Hello, everyone. This is it. We made it to Chosen. We're here. Isn't it we're wild? Here. And we are chosen. <laughs> we were chosen to do this. You are my chosen four, of course. <laughs> um, I, I've been like so emotional about this. I, I'm going to be a little... Uh, well, no one's no, no one's shocked. Ian's emotional. Um, but We're finally I, seeing the the vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, normally, behind, but. I'm normally so cold and cut off. Uh, I was gonna say we want to see that you're just such a robot. Normally, <laughs> what's going on with you? I don't know. You never say. You never say you have feelings about things. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy I could end this with the four of you. Like y'all have been great. Uh, it's been like such a weird wild ride doing this podcast and like talking about my favorite thing. And it's crazy. Like I had the four of you, I became literally very close with because of this podcast, which is mm -hmm. insane. Um, that like, literally I made some of like my best friends from doing a podcast, talking about my favorite show, which is wild. Um, like Kirsten, didn't you, was it, who was it that someone was on and you saw that and then you like reached like you were like oh right was yeah, it my friend Zoraida Cordova tweeted right. about being on the show and I was mad I was like <laughs> I'm literally writing Buffy books why am I not on that podcast um and so I had her connect us and yeah I was actually looking at my email we've been friends for three years now because Aww. of the podcast that's Yay. so nice I feel like we started just as like oh we would talk sometimes and then now Kirsten and I text about like every goddamn show we watch <laughs> um and like that's how i met zach dana i think you and i were like casual friends on twitter beforehand though, did i right? badger you into letting me be on the show i, I, can't, I usually do i usually am like <laughs> why am i not on your podcast <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was that was what happened because i think you and i like had followed each other through like geeks out or something i think that's how we found yes, each other yes. um and adam you and i had been following each other from BuzzFeed and we were already close, but we definitely got closer doing this. Yeah. That's the thing. Like we were, I think we were in person for like, cause you know, I'm in LA and you were in New York. And yeah. Like, so, you know, there was like sort of like a Twittery sort of thing. So we started hanging out and I think I just started getting involved. This was when you were just like, like you were just doing it in. Yeah. Like, you know. Cause you recorded with us in Brooklyn, right? I did. I yeah. remember that we all huddled around like the same <laughs> microphone, like with the, like we were like freaking recording like an album in 1961. <laughs> it was great. 
It was great. Yeah, you're you're actually, I think, the only one here. Yeah, you're the only one here that we had from when we recorded in person in my, that God. I told someone the other night, like, well, the sound quality isn't great to start with because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> um, and then, Zach, I think, was it Jared Draper that referred you to the podcast? No, it was somebody else. Uh, I don't even remember who it was, but I was having, like, a long Buffy discussion on Twitter with a bunch of people and somebody link to your podcast and then i don't know we just like it was like a gradual thing it wasn't yeah. immediate because i remember the first thing you asked me when you dm me you asked me who yeah. my favorite final girls were and i was like oh, that's a big question like i gotta make sure i answer it right <laughs> <laughs> you're really asking good. seven questions <laughs> yeah. uh, and then i just sort of pushed my way into your life i said do you have a you don't have, you don't have a youtube channel set up for this maybe you should do that and then we and now had, you record topless together. It's fantastic. We we do. We have a, we have a lot going on. But I I was gonna have you do. We had like weekly meetings about the YouTube channel. Do you remember yeah. that? It was yeah. right before the pandemic like really went into full effect. And yeah, we were gonna meet up in like April and film some live stuff. And it was, <laughs> None of it ended up happening, and now, <laughs> now here we. Are. And then I eventually bullied you into co-hosting because you were a little like hesitant at first. Yeah, it's fun though. Yeah, so I'm just really glad to end it, end Buffy our Buffy coverage with y'all. Um, y'all have been fucking great. I just really appreciate all four of you. Always like put in the work, and like and all four of you are also willing to like. If I'm like shit, this had to change real quick. I feel like the four of you are very flexible. Like. It, unless your schedule like can't allow you the four of you are very like very gracious with your time with me and with slayer fest and i just wanted you all to know i really appreciate that um no. we yeah. appreciate you yeah mm-hmm. no thanks the uh, love fest of the episode <laughs> let's love do fest it 98 yeah. <laughs> there we go we were talking right before we started recording what ian's new name is and i i i, I like that one <laughs> and oh yes and adam mentioned <laughs> that i should say this at the top and at the end of the recording we will be going to angel this isn't the end of the podcast uh we will still right. cover the marvel stuff and i will i'm taking a little break uh because i feel like i maybe earned a little bit of a break um and so we will be covering certain buffy episodes as they turn 25 um kirsten will be co-hosting welcome to the Hellmouth with me and we'll be having that episode out for the anniversary um, and we'll be doing certain episodes of Buffy that are either favorites of mine or like fan favorites or just like episodes where bigger things happen. We'll be covering those as they turn 25 and we will be going to yeah. Angel, but there will be a break in between. You're going to be remaining in the Buffy verse. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, and, and honestly, and all this is, you know, subject to, you know, I'm sure you're going to be doing even more than what you've just said. You know, right. you're going to wake up, you're going to get all these bright ideas, you're going to wake up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's gonna restart the whole show. I'm already calling it. It's gonna be where no, Mom, yeah, you're female character fest ninety eight. <laughs> there you go. That's not a it's bad one. Favorite episodes, and it's literally just every episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you need to do like season one and two again, probably without the like, you know, right? The you know, like old timey um, <laughs> silent movie pop and, pop and crackle tracks. Um, <laughs> hey, have you heard about this new show, Buffy the Vampire? <laughs> <laughs> no. This has been brought to you by Ovaltine. Paul <laughs> Malif, you're soaking in it. <laughs> I want Dana to talk like that for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> oh, Listen, yeah, I can only hold up this transatlantic for right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. a long time. <laughs> so, um, yes, what is Geritol and what can it do for you? <laughs> Suddenly we're in an episode of WandaVision. Um, but so... I wanted everyone, we're going to talk about Chosen, which is the finale, but uh, first I'm going to ask each one of you, like, if you remember what you felt, how you, how you were leading up to it or how you felt watching it for the first time. Like, Zach, I know this is when you tell us you were five and you didn't watch it when it aired. (laughs) Dreading Uh, this. Was I was floating in my mother's uh, <laughs> yeah. room, uh, listening? I could hear the vibrations of the, of the soundtrack. I could hear all the days I saw yelling. The sudden surge of power. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> knew one day I'd be on Slayer Fest and I'd be talking about it. Right. <laughs> And then um, when they when she said whoever can't have the power will have the power, I just I just decided it was time to be born. And I, was yes. born that I was born as the episode was airing. That's my yeah, yeah. that's my origin story and finale story. Um, so Adam, do you remember how you felt watching this? Because you didn't get to watch it live, right? No, no. And so I mean, before the show started recording, we were talking about how, like in the bef- in previous before Netflix, <laughs> um how finding and catching up on old TV shows, what a, like, uh, underground 
sort of situation it was like you were really catching stuff as you could like again like if you lived in the uk and you were trying to catch a united states show like it was right. like good luck you know it was like good luck out there um gum shoes like trying to find <laughs> like even not even the whole show like the episodes right um so for me um i had a hard stop in at, at, at uh the season four premiere the freshman this is why i never saw angel um is because my Little one horse whistle stop towns decided to stop carrying UPN and WB and all that. So um, uh, later, I like had to just like buy the full chunky DVD box sets, and I did that in college. And so I was like a senior in college when I like finally like flipped through the rest of them. And I think by that point, like it was it was about two or three years done. So it wasn't like that in the past, okay. um, but it was definitely sort of known. So I feel like I did know a few things, like who lived, who died, like how it kind of turned out. Um, so I can't really give like a full honest, like I was gagged and I was like crying. Like I do remember being like so swept away by how suddenly expensive their music budget got. Yes. They got a full orchestra. Yeah. Like I, I can't even, like the, the, the music for just specifically Chosen is so swelling. It's like the Buffy movie that never happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I was even looking up that like they they wanted this to be like a two hour event, but they, like UPN was just like, please leave the building. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so I do feel like this. Adam, that's some shit that would happen to us. <laughs> I, I was a little, there, it was a, yeah, it's, it, it's the, uh, Fans of Muppet Vision 3D were uh, Sam Eagle <laughs> said it's a it's a three hour salute to uh, to all nations it's it's wonderful and they're like well you have four minutes and he just goes <laughs> okay <laughs> I love that reference yes <laughs> it's beautiful yeah so I get like I think it was definitely one of those things where like the episode moves and so I remember just like loving it so I, I I'm not I'm I'm gonna fall on the side of non crier on this where I was oh like, I feel like I did know what was going on like obviously it's like a, it's like it's like oh the show's ending. Um, I get weird with series finales. Like, mm-hmm. I don't get like, oh, I'm glad that's it. Like, I get very, like, TV characters are my friends, like, very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So I get, I immediately after the series finale have to like daisy chain it to the pilot. Um, mm-hmm. Parasocial like, like, relationship. You're with a good, you're with a good gro- group of people right here. <laughs> I'm one of the broken people. Yes, um, and I'm fine with that. I'm just, I can't fix everything about me. Okay, I want to work on. <laughs> certain things but not that so yeah like so i think i was definitely one of the, like i get very weird because i know it's the end and i get very like i'm at a party that i don't want to like either be at or leave so i'm just like okay i'm here this is like the, the vibe is weird the vibe is off so let's just get through this and then we're going to get to the and then we'll just go back to like the parts where we're all hanging out friends Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam, that's that's interesting, though. I like that you like, it's like, nope, I got to go back to one and more. Okay, every, sh- every show, 30 Rock, I do like every show. I do. <laughs> huh, all right. Uh, Kirsten, do you remember how you felt watching this for the first time? Um, Yeah, Adam, I'm the opposite. I just don't finish series if I'm really into it. <laughs> oh, <them>. yes. <laughs> and like, I know it's the final season. I'll quit like three episodes before the end. And then it <laughs> never ends. <laughs> um, See, that's good that's yeah. like, it, it like lives like so it can like live in your head exactly in a it's mine way. now it's not over uh, <laughs> <laughs> i did not do that with buffy so i i was watching buffy live while i was airing as a teenager and then when buffy went to college my mom decided it was too dirty and we couldn't watch it anymore mm. so fast forward a few years i probably have two kids at that point so fast forward, not very many years, fast forward, very few years. Um, <laughs> and I was living in a low income apartment. And the only place I could get to, cause I didn't have a car was the library and the library had Buffy on DVD, the full collection. So I would go and I would check out like the, like the first group and watch them all. And, um, and I worked my way through the series that way. And so I remember, you know, I was sitting on the floor of my apartment watching my really not great TV. Um, and I don't, I don't remember too much about it. I do remember trying really hard not to cry because I'm a sympathetic crier. I cry whenever anybody is crying on TV. Um, I also just cry a lot during shows anyway. And my husband, we have been together for 20 years and I've literally never seen him cry ever. Oh. 
So I get really embarrassed oh. when I crack during shows. <laughs> oh my gosh, the ending of The Good Place killed me. Um, <laughs> and so, so yeah, I think my main thing was like sitting there on the floor watching it, trying not to cry. Um, but, you know, I loved it then. I love it now. Um, and, you, you know, the, the series as a whole had a huge impact on me because it was right around then that I started writing Paranormalcy, which is my first published novel, which is very heavily, very obviously Buffy influenced. Um, Jason, I remember the first time we recorded and you called, you said that Paranormalcy was basically your Buffy fan fiction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never written official fan fiction because I refuse to write things that I can't get paid for, but... <laughs> Uh, That's yeah, the energy but, I need, Kirsten. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you do. You do need that energy, Ian. Um, but yeah, Ian was, has the opposite <laughs> energy. <laughs> anyway, I'm not interested. Yeah, <laughs> paid job, no thank you. Uh, but anyway, yes, Kirsten, uh, <laughs> continue. I mean, that's that's basically it. I don't really remember much else about it. That was a very um, sleep-deprived period of my life, so I don't have a lot of memories of that time period. Um, but I do remember just really loving loving the ending, loving the final shot, and just, yeah, I think it's a good ending. Um, Dana? Oh, man, 2002 to 2005 are just an absolute blur for me. <laughs> and, like, was I – on top of the world, or was I living on an air mattress in an empty apartment after I broke up with a fiance? Like I don't remember <laughs> anything. Who could remember? <laughs> I just remember this hurting very badly, um, and also being so exciting and also really satisfying. I, I remember feeling like, "Wow, this is what a series like a series finale is, mm-hmm. is yeah. like." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Zach. Mm. <laughs> you made me self-conscious now. Um, well, I was like eight or nine when this happened. Um, <laughs> see, so when we when season five came on, I was in Germany, and I don't remember watching every episode. I think there were some of them that I would miss because other things would come on or something. I don't know. We didn't get all of them, mm-hmm. um, but I remember watching the season five finale, being like super depressed that she died and and all of that. But I had like a bunch of friends in the states. And so when season six came on, I was like, what, what's happening over there? What is going on? Because um, it wasn't playing in, in Germany. And they're all like, Don's the Slayer. Don's the Slayer now. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is awful. Um, <laughs> and so see, when I, when I got back to the States, I remember – finding American TV for like, it felt like the first time, right? I would stay up at 3 a.m. and watch Boy Meets World because it was just amazing to me. Um, <laughs> but I would like sit with the the TV guide on, like, you know, the 100 channels and wait for him to scroll because I wanted to find Buffy. I knew it was there somewhere. And so I would just like, wait and wait and wait and find, look for it. And I think I found it right at the end of season six. Um, got to watch those last few episodes. And then season seven was the first like full season of Buffy I ever got to watch. So it was so exciting. It could do no wrong. You know, <laughs> um, the, the finale came on, we had like a bunch of, uh, neighborhood kids sleeping at our house and they all made fun of it while it was happening. I got so pissed. I like got up and went to my sister's room and closed myself in there and finished <laughs> it out. And then, uh, it ended and I just felt this depression. Like I'd never felt before. I'm just exactly <laughs> like Adam. I have to go back and watch it. Um, we, I did have season one on DVD, but we didn't have a DVD player. So I just like stared at the case. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right that after was so it. sad. The sippy cup fell right out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was awful. Um, <laughs> But it, you know, it's, it's, it's a finale that going through it, like having to do stuff for Slayer Fest, I have to like pick out like, you know, where things could have been better. And like, you know, I've been right. trying to meet y'all's energy on this. Um, but when I watch yeah. the finale, just, there's, just, there's nothing, there's nothing other than like, I think it should have been a, a two hour episode, but mm-hmm. everything else is just, I, I just love it so much. I think it's perfect. I love the, again, like Kristen said, the, 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 the final shot, it's just, you know, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. Adam, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I'm just laughing at like Zach and I with a split screen, like me 20 and you like <laughs> having the same emotional. <laughs> I had that when season five ended too, though. I had a group of Spice Girls dolls. And when season five ended, I like, I had no way of bringing her back myself so, or, or watching her come back. Yeah. So I just acted out with all of the dolls, right? And Ginger was Buffy. Uh, and, amazing. Yeah. 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 We're just, we're like, it's like we're doing, um, when Giles and Tara did like wish I could stay like, <laughs> two radically different ages. Uh, <laughs> so I, so my mom and I would always watch 
but we used to watch it together, but my mom like talks through everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So by season seven, it was like, we cannot watch TV together, but I would watch it in my room on my tiny box TV and she would watch it in her room down the hall. And we, I would go into her room doing commercial breaks to talk. And like, I specifically can remember like er all of my friends knew we can't call Ian because tonight he's watching Buffy. Like everyone knew it was like a, you gotta, you gotta give Ian room. He's watching his favorite thing. It's ending. He's going to be upset. He's emotional. Um, it was like all I was talking about leading up to it with all my friends. Like I was just so excited and like, you know, there have been shows that I have loved since, but there's, I can't think of a show that had this like much of a hold on me as this did. Like I, I couldn't shut the fuck up about, Oh my God, the finale's happening in like a week, blah, blah, blah. And like everyone knew that I, I had plans that Tuesday night. Um, and like, I can remember when Buffy gets stabbed and it oh, like she yeah. has that thud and like running into my mom's room and both of us being like, Oh my God, do we think, do we think they're going to kill her? Is she going to die? Like, I'll be so upset if she dies. And we were both like very worried that she would die, even though after that commercial break, she comes back just fine. But I was like super worried. And I, a thing that I remember the most is I was crying so hard about Anya, which if you can't tell, I'm still a little congested from crying about it, from watching it before this recording. Um, and I remember my friend calling me at like, 905 or 1005 whenever like five minutes after it ended and i was still crying so i answered the phone crying and her being like did buffy die are you okay <laughs> <laughs> and i was like no but anya did and like my friends didn't watch the show but they knew every character because i didn't shut up about the show <laughs> and she i remember her being like oh i'm sorry i know how much you loved her <laughs> and then the next day at work i was working at a movie theater one of the ushers she was like, oh, I didn't get to watch it. My dad taped it, but like, I haven't got to watch it yet. I need you to tell me, does Anya live? And that was like, I was like, oh, uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. And her be like, you need to tell me. And me being like, no, Anya died. And her just sobbing in the like hallway of the movie theater we were working at because she was so upset that Anya died. <laughs> like like Dawn finding out her mom's dead. Yeah, it really no. was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all right, let's... Uh, get into it because i do think i don't know i'm depressed now i don't know if i want to do this episode <laughs> so i do i do kind of like when i watch it i do feel like you zach where i'm like this is perfect but if i think about it there are just like tiny things but the, even the tiny things don't bother me the first tiny thing that bothers me was i got spoiled because i love that previously on for the gift mm. oh um, yeah and, you know, I had Ryan Houlihan read our previously on, but I I was hoping they would do something like that for this. And I was a little bummed it wasn't like a cool, because that's like really iconic. Like that's part of the episode, I think, mm-hmm. from the gift. Um, having every character, like, you know, the like, Mr. Giles, Cordelia Chase, Xander, blah, 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 and like the music and everything. Well, so much so that they even put that as if you watch the season five DVD set, yeah. you know, it's like, that's the beginning of, of <clears throat> the main menu, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, that's like an Easter egg in the DVDs too. Like you can mm-hmm. find that. Um, and like, I remember being like, oh, that's weird. And like, then being like, oh, maybe they'll do something with the credits like they did with like when Tara died, but like, you know, a more fun version of that where it's like everyone. Um, but like, again, those are like very small things. Um, I, how do is, how does everyone feel? Cause last episode I had uh, Anthony and Joe and Matthew, and they're not that big of fans of this season. I love the angel stuff. I think it works. And I think it makes sense that she needs to have good beats with both angel and spike because as Kirsten has said on this podcast, a zillion fucking times. And I agree with, The ships are so like, okay, I don't know. Like, I care about Buffy. So like, Mm -hmm. I don't care about her landing one way or the other. I -hmm. care about her having these nice beats, like emotional, like beats with the characters that are beloved to her. Well, from a fan perspective, it's closure for both characters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's completely open but also closed at the same time, which I think right. I always appreciated about it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a hundred percent it, Dana. Like I really like, it's not like, Oh, I'm going to marry you or like, Oh, I'm going to be with you forever. She's just, you know, uh, I don't know. And I, I do think at this point in the show, Angel, cause the, the, their critique was Angel didn't feel quite Angel, but I think David Boreanaz had got more comfortable as Angel. So it, the line between him and the character at this point in both shows was a little bit like Angel was a little bit jokier and mm-hmm. quippier than he had been. Bearable. 
He's more bearable. <laughs> Angel kind of has like a similar trajectory performance wise to Thor, where it's yes. like night and day from how it <laughs> began to how he's like now, where he's just like a clown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like, yeah. So I mean, like, I do understand that. Like, yeah, he had this whole. But it was very weird to me, like a non-angel watcher mm. getting this entirely different person <laughs> back <laughs> for the, for the last episode, and then bringing in like a brand new MacGuffin we had never established on this series to deal with, with yes. in the form of this necklace. Um, which again, I'm like, I never really sweat that sort of stuff. Or being like, oh, you didn't establish that correctly according to Robert McKee's story. Um, <laughs> but like, it is a little like when the I don't know, just it, w- and we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. But like, it's a little like um, you know that this can only be worn by someone with a soul, but who's more than human? Like, it's very clearly like, oh, so Spike is supposed to wear this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they handled it really well because, um, like Dana was saying, I think you needed that that emotional full circle of having these moments with both of the major love interests. Um, So they had Angel come, they had him serve a purpose. Their dialogue in these scenes is amazing and super funny. I mean, I wrote down so many lines. Same. Yes. Um, But, but I also love that it doesn't matter that he comes. Mm. It doesn't change anything. Yeah. He, he delivers the, like one of the deuce ex machinas. Um, But, but then, but then he leaves and he needs to leave because this is not his moment. This, you know, as Buffy says, like not much with a damseling. She doesn't need him. Mm -hmm. And they have a really good, they have a really good rationale too. It's like the Avengers problem, right? Like if you know all of the Avengers and you have this huge problem, why are you not calling all of the Avengers to come help you? Right. Yeah. But in this case, her rationale for having him leave makes perfect sense. Like if we fail, Someone out there needs to know what's going on so you can be the next line of defense. And that that is enough justification for me storytelling-wise where I'm like, yes, that tracks. That makes sense. Then that we can all be okay with him leaving. Yeah. I, You know, Kirsten, I remember when I watched this live being really bummed that he wasn't there for the final battle. But now like removed from it, I 100% am like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it would have been cool to see him there, but it 100% makes sense, right? Yeah, he's not He's not a key player anymore. He's not the emotional core of, of this season or even any of the most recent seasons. Right. So it wouldn't make sense to give him a big emotional burden to carry. Um, so instead, you know, you get the the high emotion, the like charming repartee, the, yeah. you know, we're going to kiss for a while. And then- he leaves. Well, and also, it's the last episode, and Buffy has always had to choose saving the world. Like, that is mm-hmm. always right. what she's had to do. And whether or not she would have loved to have Angel by her side, saving the world means Angel taking on the second defense, right? Yeah. Right. So it's always about Buffy having to make that decision. And of course, she's going to yeah. make that decision in the finale. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, and Kirsten, what you said, I I really love. I I think the first half of this episode, which is like the setup for the final battle, the dialogue is like so tight and so good. They pulled out all the stops, right? And it feels yeah. like for me, it feels like a perfectly staged play because we mm-hmm. get these moments, and we're not really like there's not really a plot to it. It's mm-hmm. more like these very good moments. Um, and I they all land for me. I even like. You know, we even get Caleb wakes up, right? He knocks over Angel after she says she's done basking. Ask him why he's here. He knocks over Angel. <laughs> he does his like. You ready to finish this bitch? Yeah. <laughs> you do a good Caleb. Is, well, no, that's my line rating for this. This is exactly <laughs> what I say to Ian before we ever record my bloody duty too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> like he has the like, I, I think it's a cool visual. It doesn't make sense, but sure. Fine. He has like the black blood um, coming out his eyes. It looks cool. And she, like, very quickly disposes of him, which I like. Mm-hmm. I like that, you know, he calls her a bitch, he calls her girl, and then she just fucking chops him in half, starting with his, like, dick. Like, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do wish, and this is just, I, this is probably the horror person in me, I wish there was, like, a cool, like, black tar blood splatter on her when she, like, cut him in half, because it would make sense. But I guess it was... 
uh, UPN. Yeah, and they were like, dirty because she needs to go like have a yeah, wee. Yeah, yeah. Then she's she's a glowing in this scene. Like oh, I don't is. want her covered in black goo. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's gonna have just like squidding, just yeah, like, no, like no. light or something like taupe. I can't remember. <laughs> Looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so Zach, you you're not that big of a fan of Angel, but you do like him in these scenes. Gosh, I'm like I hate how whiny he is, but I do love him, right? Um, <laughs> as a Buffy fan, I love him. I, I and I like him coming back, right? Because it does seem like he ever since he left, he does kind of pop up at random moments. Like mm-hmm. her mom died, you know, he came and like, yeah. served his purpose and sat with it for a little while. Um, and here he's coming and like offering something to her. She tells him she doesn't need it. And, you know, she kind of ends the episode without a boyfriend, right? Like, she yeah. doesn't really need a guy. And this is her kind of, like, saying that, you know, saying that the Buffy Angel thing was, like, something that happened. But it's not something that, like, I'm good without it. I don't I don't really need you. We don't have to have this big romantic thing here for the fans. Let's let's do a quick, you know, um, MTV Best Kiss Award. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, she ends it without Spike. And I just think it works with both of those relationships kind of closing and mm-hmm. bookending the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love her line of, I, I can remember being so like shook that she's like, are you gonna come here and go all Dawson on me anytime I get a boyfriend <laughs> and like being like, ah, oh, cause that show, I'm pretty sure ended the same like time that Buffy ended. I think both of them <clears> like ended at the same time. I remember entertainment weekly having a spread about both shows ending. Um, and I, li- I even like his retort of, aha, boyfriend, you said it. Like, mm-hmm. I. <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they're, they're like dynamic here when he's like, that'll end well. And she's like, what was the highlight of our relationship when you broke up with me or when I killed you? Like, uh, yes. Uh, it's yes. so good. And I love that she says she's aware of her stellar history with guys. And I never realized it before, but I think that's why I, because I say that, and I was like, oh, I definitely got that from Buffy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very, like, down with love sort of sparring, but in, like, a really slick sort of just yes. rat a tap kind of way. Yes, which I love. You know I love that mm-hmm. shit, because I'm not, like, I I have all the emotions, but I'm not that big on a romance plot, so I love, mm-hmm. I love this dynamic of them as people who love each other, but are not, like... Yes. You know, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. There's so much affection there. There's so much mutual respect and love and support. But at the same time, they know this is not their moment. Maybe they will never have their moment. And that's okay. Like, there's a lot of history there. I also like, I actually really love Whiny Angel. Like, when <laughs> it's all like, um, everyone's got a soul now. I started it. Like, <laughs> I think it's hilarious that he gets all defensive. Like, that's my thing. <laughs> These like, big guys are very petty. It's uh-huh. always very nice. <laughs> I do really like him in this though. I think I think the way he comes off in this is just it's fun. It's playful. Yeah. It's the the you know, everybody's gonna be a little bit jealous of of an ex and whatever they're doing with their life, right? Like just yeah. that little bit of jabbing mm-hmm. in there. And it's perfect. Like, even during the apocalypse, it, you know, it's gonna mm-hmm. sting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? It could be an apocalypse, and I could still be like, "Well, Zach, we need to talk about this with my bloody Judy," <laughs> <laughs> which is why the cookie dough monologue is oh. so fucking perfect. It's one, oh. it's one of my all-time favorite television monologues ever. It's a good fucking monologue. It's a really good one. Yeah, I, I was like, "Fuck, is it bad that she's like twenty-one or twenty-two here, and I'm almost 40 And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right. I relate to this." <laughs> <laughs> he is not done baking yet, guys. <laughs> He's been baking for four hours. <laughs> but it's like it's Don't like this me. most. It's so awkward, and I love when Buffy is awkward. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's so it's but it's so heartfelt and awkward mm-hmm. and just dumb and perfect at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Right, Dana. Because it is like kind of dumb, but also perfect. Like yes. Ah, I love it, and like I do feel like this version of Buffy this does feel like our final form of Buffy because it's like, she's still confident. Like she's confident in all of this that she's delivering. And Sarah Michelle Gellar is like doing such good line delivery and all of this. And I even love like, and I read on Wikipedia that this was on purpose. Like Angel first enters through the shadows in his first episode of Buffy. And in this, he like leaves through the shadows. Um, And I love the way that looks when he's like, I'm not getting any older. And just like, it's like, cool. They walk away um we cut to the summer's house dawn i there's a little uh, there's a couple of like plots like this where i'm like we why did we bother i get it i get why she would want to send dawn away but like it doesn't go anywhere she comes back she kicks her in the shin um i think it's a 
important though. It's an important note. Yeah. Like, he's not going to put Don at risk. Like sometimes when I'm watching a show or whatever, and they're letting the young people stay and be in tremendous risk as a mom, I'm like, uh, that's deeply irresponsible. <laughs> so I do like that they, and you know, it gives Don and Xander something to do. Yeah, it's true. That's true. So, I get no, it. And I, then, yeah, you have this great moment of you get <laughs> the shin kick and then you get killed, I'm telling. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Wait, it's such like a small sister moment, but it's a really, really good one. And yeah. everybody is like, like rather than Buffy seeing that Don has, has come back and, you know, being like, you can't be here, you know, every sort of bit of dialogue in this is very like calm, cool, collected. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like everybody yes. is very like, okay, well. I'm not fighting this right now. We don't have time for that. You know, let's move along. Which even leads us to the spike moment, right? Like mm-hmm. she's told everyone she killed, uh, which I do like her line of slices, dices, dices, slices, <laughs> dices, and makes Julian preacher. Excuse uh, me. Yo? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, then she goes to the basement and I even, I almost wish spike had just said, yeah, I smell him on you. I know you kiss because I don't love that the previous episode ends with the first being like that bitch. And we, because I, I liked Spike's reaction here where he's a little jealous, but again, like you said, Zach, it's like, it's the apocalypse. We don't have time. All right, fine. Um, and I, I like their moments here. They get some really good moments towards, I mean, Kirsten, we talked about it with touch. They really do get some good Spike and Buffy moments. And the two of them, are just like committed the way they act these scenes together. Yeah, they do. And I like that they set up where, where the first is talking to Spike, watching Angel and Buffy and being like, see, she doesn't need you. And so they set up like, Oh, maybe Spike's going right. to run or maybe Spike's going to be mad, but no, like he's mad at Angel, but he's not like, I like that everyone in this episode understands the stakes and puts them puts their own sort of like pettiness aside yeah except for the mm-hmm. angel picture of the punching bag <laughs> that is an amazing well, amazing detail and i love it so much and it yes. does add that pettiness without spike being like you betrayed me i'm gonna yeah. leave. like no he's yeah. you know he gets what the stakes are he's not gonna leave he's not gonna walk out on her and he's finally become the man that he needs to be in order to do the rest of this episode. <laughs> well, and I love, I, I also love Buffy because this is me, her being like, I'm going to make you boys wrestle it out. Ooh, maybe there'll be some oil involved. And I was like, girl, I feel you like, please. Yeah. Um, um, and then he has so many, he has good lines here too. Like most people don't use their tongues to say hello. Well, I guess they do. Yeah. <laughs> and then we claims an angel wears lifts. Like, yeah. I love how petty they both are about each other. It's yes. amazing. Yeah, like a- Angel called him Captain Peroxide, and he's like, "Well, he wears lifts." And I even like his little <laughs> bit when he's like, "Someone with a soul, blah blah blah." What are you gonna do? Give it to Andrew about the necklace? <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember though that, like, I, I always have to remind myself, right? Because we know that this is the finale and the big, big, big battle, right? But like at this point, they don't really know that yet. They're mm-hmm. kind of just like everybody is still kind of in that mode of hanging around the house and. People are going to come at us and we're going to defend ourselves, right? Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, when we get there, I have like, I like that we kind of don't know that, mm-hmm. but the, the, the plot works even before we realize we don't know what their plan is. Mm-hmm. Cause it, we kind of think, like watching it, I was like, oh, right. I forgot that, like, we just think, I mean, not us, cause we've all seen it a bunch of times, but like plot wise, they make you think her plan is just, we're going to go there and we're going to close the hell mouth. That's it. Yeah. Um, but I the the thing that I fuck, I love Buffy so much. And the thing that I love is that so she wakes up, she can't sleep, and mm-hmm. that the first comes to taunt her. First as Caleb, which he has that very good line calling him the Wanna Slay Brigade, which I think is a very good name for them. Um, and then turns into Buffy and does like the like chosen one, you alone speech. So good. Mm-hmm. And like the fact that they're like, where's your like where's your snappy comeback? And she just says, you're right. And they're like, "Mm, not your best. And then she looks at Spike and says, I just realized something. Something never occurred to me before. We're going to win. Like, fuck yeah, Buffy. Everybody cry because I did. I I (laughs) cried about this. This is where this this was my first beat that I cried at. (laughs) Wait, really? Yes. I I, I don't. And it just hit me out of nowhere. I just like, (laughs) I couldn't help myself. It's so good, right? Because it, it taunted her into her realizing, oh, fuck you, I can win this. Like, yeah. I absolutely love when she's confident like this. I love yes. when she has realizations of confidence and when she uh, is just, you know, 
Buffy the fucking vampire slayer. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And like we get that in the next scene. So she we cut to the Scooby meeting the next day. She's telling them her plan. And I even like the Giles beat where he's like, I think it's bloody brilliant. And she says, you mean that? And he says, if you want my opinion. And she says, really do. This is this was when I started tearing up because like I want (laughs) I for me, I wanted them to have a moment of like, hey, I'm sorry I did this. But also and Kirsten, you have written her. I feel like you might agree. Uh, I also feel like Buffy, that makes sense that she wouldn't need to have that conversation. She would just be like, yes, I forgive you. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, again, these characters all have so much history with each other and, and they've reached the point where they just know what their value is to each other and they love each other. And I, and I, and I can go along with that. I can accept that. Also, you know, I totally wrote in all hearts, dad Giles. Like, <laughs> he's her, I mean, he's her father figure. And they always, they haven't always had the smoothest of relationships, but I do, I love this moment between them Yeah, where he's like, I support you if you want my opinion. And she, she does. Oh, she chills, chills. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a little bit of a cheat to be like, here's the plan. And then they cut away. Like on one hand, that really does bother me. It's like when you have a book and the character's like, and then she started remembering that day, that terrible day that changed everything. But no, she thought, I won't think of it now. And you're like, oh, come on. You were literally thinking of it. Um, so it's a little bit of a cheat, but it pays off so well. In yes. Life, but I don't mind that much. Yeah. Um, Can't really do genre TV without that stuff. I mean, all of true. Lost would have been solved in a season. <laughs> Out of your right. They- it was as every loss I was it was like, remember that thing you did? How dare you come back after that thing you did? Mm-hmm. And we knew we were waiting two more seasons for that. <laughs> and the twist was literally no one knew what they did, including the writers. No one. <laughs> and that, yeah, and then you would be then the audience would be gaslit. They'd be like, no, we never implied that there was a secret underneath that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Adam, I love that you and I both love loss so much, but if someone just listened to this podcast, they would think you and I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't know if I love it or hate it. Um, <laughs> but okay, so we get, we also get the like, and I oh, I was trying to look on Wikipedia because Willow d- gives the line of like, oh, and I'm going to lose control and not in a nice, wholesome, my girlfriend has a pierced tongue kind of way. <laughs> yep. I don't know if we all remember, because I do remember in touch when you see that Kennedy has a tongue ring, like all the message boards were like wild, like, did we see that she had a tongue ring? (laughs) And I always wonder if that was like in reaction to that, because they didn't like mention it, but you very clearly see it when she's like licking Willow. Mm -hmm. As the official lesbian of (laughs) Slayer Fest 98, (laughs) I say, this is what I say to it. Okay. You know, often like, okay, so we're looking like 20, 20 plus years ago or whatever, Lesbians mm-hmm. were often so over sexualized, but this is this is like this line comes from Willow, mm. and it is so it, it is so lesbian agency or queer agency <laughs> that I so appreciate it because it yeah it is sexualized, but because it's coming from her, mm-hmm. yeah, That's yeah, you- the thing very like because this was you know like two thousand and three this is. This is when the film 13 came out. So we're all very aware of, of you know, of, of the tongue stuff thing. <laughs> of the tongue ring. Of the tongue tone era of 2002 to 2003. God, um, yeah. yeah. So this is, yeah, this is definitely, yeah, this is definitely one of those things where, like, I feel like it, it really depends who yes. that line is coming out of. Mm-hmm. Because if somebody else was, like, in 2003 was, like, this gay guy wearing a puka shell necklace and I would be like, you don't get to say that. And then like, <laughs> like <laughs> coming out of Andrew would be like, oh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I love the Anya line that she gets when she's like, come on, let's go assemble the cannon fodder. And Xander's like, that's not what we're calling them, sweetie. And she says, not to their faces. What am I insensitive? <laughs> I just love Anya so much. And like, this season, I I very much understand why people are like, they didn't know what to do with her after Selfless, because they didn't, but she mm-hmm. still gets so many good moments yeah. like mm-hmm. that are just like throwaway lines that the episode could do without, but they enhance yeah. like it, right? Yeah. And they've also been through this so much that like her kind of, you know, obliviousness to like the fact that this is this is the battle uh you know i i like that and she doesn't even really have any realization till later and you know so all of these little jokes she's making perfect yeah. you know yeah and so we cut to the summer's living room we get uh buffy's <laughs> telling everyone her plan 
<laughs> What's all these that? randos? <laughs> <laughs> it really, I, you know, I was thinking about it. And I was like, I feel like some of the ones we even saw, like yeah. I don't see them. I giggle like, every time. <laughs> I think they just some of them just like came from the Starbucks down the street. Or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're they're like, they didn't accidentally didn't get evacuated, and they're like, "Well, something's <laughs> happening over at the summer's house." <laughs> Let's just walk over, all right? <laughs> yeah, because there are so many people, and I really feel like the like the how many potential slayers there are changes in like every scene. Um, mm-hmm. And so we get her like, I, I see. Even if that was just her plan, I think the way. Samuel Shagallar delivers like I'm going down to the Hellmouth and I'm finishing this once and for all is like very good. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and I, 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 yeah. So, but we don't finish that. But like the episode does work, right? Even yeah. if that was her plan, like mm-hmm. it does. It does. Um, so there we get we cut to Faith and Robin Wood, which I will have my tiny critique that I think most of their scenes kind of stop the episode. Um, I get that we were probably setting off, setting up a spinoff in case Faith got one, but mm-hmm. their scenes, I'm kind of like, Meh. I don't know. I like it. I like it a yeah. lot. I like them a lot together. Like, I think they work really well together. And I would have liked it. I don't think that would have been a long term relationship, but I would have liked to see that one from start to finish. I would have liked to see it evolve into a friendship, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. But I, I do love, I mean, I agree that their scenes do kind of bring everything to a screeching halt because you're just not emotionally invested in them. Yeah. I, I'm invested in Faith. Yes. And I really like Robin Wood, but Faith and Robin is like, yeah, who cares? Um, but what he says, I'm so much prettier than you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and, and like, they are both fucking hot. So yeah. like, that is so beautiful. <laughs> that's a, yeah, beautiful. I think like, them as a couple could have benefited had there been an eighth season or a spinoff or whatever, yeah. any other yeah. way of revisiting them. They could have benefited from some more comedy. Like mm-hmm. I think especially Faith is the perfect foil for him because he was so serious um, that like a lot of comedy could be made about him like hooking up with a slayer with his mom issues with the slayer. Um, <laughs> so like, and then she would have had no bones about just like calling it out and then not having a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like moving on and her being like, whatever about it. Yeah. Right. And then, just, and, but just like playing with that and having some fun with it. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's a, okay. For me, the scene crosses a line between teasing and just being freaking rude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what he's, what he says, he knows is going to like deeply offend her. Yeah, and the fact that he just so glibly does it, I don't like. Yeah, um, you know that's what Faith Faith like thinks sees herself as this. You know, I don't know sex bomb, sex bomb. Yeah, right, and and that's important to her. Mm-hmm. And he just like so he cuts her right up, down at the knees, and it just it just feels kind of unnecessary. But yeah. I do like them. I think they would have been a really great team if we would have gotten to see more of their development. Mm. And their relationship is starting very sexual anyway, though. So like all of the sex, I'm okay with all the sex conversations and the, 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 the I don't know. I like it. I, I do really like it. I think it would have been nice again to see them kind of progress and get on a deeper level, you know, beyond sex. But I really like that. They kind of started their relationship off in a yeah. sexual way. I think Robin and faith, like, in real life, like got together, you know, and then had kind of like a Ben Affleck J Lo thing where like yeah. they got back together 20 years later. <laughs> Their casual <laughs> sex relationship, you know, we don't like, we yeah. had casual sex with Buffy and, and, and Parker and, you know, that was the message that, Oh, well that just didn't work out, you know, but like they, they have casual sex, Faith and Robin probably hooked up, you know, a lot over the past 20 years, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, that's well, the thing. That's a great thing. Cause they're humans. Right? Yeah. Right. We yeah. actually right. get to have them mature. So Robin gets a chance to loosen up. Faith gets a chance to mature, mm-hmm. come back 20 years or 15 yeah. years later, man, they'd be a dynamic duo. Yeah. 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 That's true. You know yeah. They're both still around. They both still look good. Do it. Somebody do it. I know all y'all got connections in some way or another. <laughs> so I do I when Bates when when Bates, when <laughs> God, when Faith is like, uh uh-uh, uh, we're going again. You're gonna learn some respect and is unbuckling her belt. I'm like, ooh, love a confident top. Love it. Love mm-hmm. to see that. Yeah. Um, Fucking nineties. 
bell, that slash <laughs> 2000s bell with the rivets. Oh my god! That was Listen. like it was like costuming from Girls Five Ever. It was like they were making fun of 2003 in 2003. <laughs> they really were. Well, as as everyone said in the last recording, Faith dresses, or maybe they said in our recording, Faith dresses the way I still dress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, then we get a Kennedy and Willow scene. Um, I don't mind their conversation here. I think it's cute. I think. Uh, Kennedy's, I love that Kennedy gets her soft butch look with the white top and the black suspenders. I think I tell you, they always think we wear suspenders. <laughs> we wear suspenders than they think we do. <laughs> oh my God. I don't like the look on her, Dana. Do you not like it? <laughs> we don't wear that many suspenders, Ian. <laughs> Dana. This is not just a Buffy problem. It's a general costuming lesbian problem. I'm just, I'm just venting. <laughs> uh, so then we get the, which I think is really charming, the D&D game. Oh my playing. gosh. It is such a uh, cute reveal where yes. they're planning out positioning and then it pans out and you realize it's a D&D game. Like, hmm. I love this moment. I love that they referenced Trogdor, which was yeah. another one of my big fandoms, actually. Um, <laughs> Homestar Runner. Yes. And then, I, it's such I, a weird reference, right? Especially now. Being it is like, a really oh, right. weird reference, but, you know, like... it. I loved it. Um, (laughs) But then also I just love this, this little moment of like, you know, companionship and intimacy. And then they pan out and Anya's asleep on the table. And and just that moment of affection for Anya where Xander reaches out and pats her head. And like, I I love that. I love in these last few episodes, we do get this sort of reconciliation between Anya and Xander where they're allowed to love each other again. And like, I don't want them to end up together. I don't think that he deserves her. Um, but, but I do love that these last few episodes have as much affection for Anya as we do. Yeah. It's, it's such a good scene. So this is like my little problem with the episode is that this again should have been a two hour episode and the first hour should have been all of these moments, right? Ian, you yeah. said it's like an episode made up of moments and this should have yeah. been like one of those. I love, you know, them going out in the camper all together and how Anya was in the camper and like how she is like right before this final battle, you know, and it all just works so well. And I just wish we had longer takes of all of this because this Dungeons and Dragons, you know, uh, table game is so perfect. And the people who are there are perfect. Like Amanda fits so well with these people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. It's just like, uh, yeah, we did get, you know, a little bit of Anya and, and Xander reconciliation, but we never really had the Scoobies bringing Anya back in. Like we kind mm-hmm. of left her versus Scoobies as like, what do you really do? You just sit here and she's like, Oh, I provide much needed sarcasm. But like, you know, she gets called a civilian. Yeah. She doesn't really on. get brought in yet. And it, like, it never really happens, you know? And I accept this as her getting brought in, even though it's not, you know, <laughs> I, I have to for my soul. <laughs> uh, so then we, we cut to Sunnydale high, right? We're there. Mm. Um, we, I, I, oh, wait, I think you skipped. Oh. I do like we have these scenes of people together, people together, people together. Oh yeah, Buffy standing out on the porch alone. Yes, right. And just You're- that moment. It doesn't last very long, and then we see her in the basement, and she and Spike look at each other from across the basement, and you're like, oh, are they about to kiss? Are they about to go to each other? And then it cuts to the high school, and I love. That they never show us what happens there. Yes. Yeah. So it's just yeah. choose your own adventure, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Did they, you know, did they have sex? Did they just hold each other that night again? Did they have, did they play board games? You don't know. <laughs> and it's the and perfect moment to do a choose your own adventure, right? Because like everybody has their own sort of what they want from the Buffy Spike relationship. And that's really mm-hmm. the moment where they give you, you know, do it yourself. Um, yep. Yep. All of these shots of them arriving at the high school, fucking excellent. You know, yes. they're mm-hmm. all like the, the camera is moving so much with the characters that it just, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. It's I'm blown away every time. Yeah. And like the, I, I, having Robin Wood lead them in and being like, you know, making like jokey principle, like orientation, no, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I love that. Um, yeah. the, the show started in high school. It has to end in high school. Like it just makes sense. Um, and I, I, everyone, all the lines are A+. plus. I think everything here is A+. plus. We get, mm-hmm. I love Xander's like, if you have to go to the bathroom, it is the right. If you do not, think about what you're about to face because <laughs> I am a nervous peer. I peed like a zillion times oh leading up to this yeah. recording. <laughs> I would so be the one potential that had to run to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me go back in a second. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, we just got our powers, but let me go pee real fast. Yeah, it's like when I'm I tell strong, my kids, so I can run fast. Yeah, it's like I tell my kids, you know, go to the bathroom, and my little one's like, 
I don't need to. And I'm like, I didn't ask if you needed to. I told you to go. <laughs> Kirsten. Oh, I'm a nice. I feel like you use that voice with me sometimes, Kirsten. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's required when you're dealing with me. Um, so we get like their, we kind of like see they're splitting up. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a little issue I do have. I wish the splitting up made more sense. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why well, put Andrew and Anya together? Like yeah. she would have, neither of them have particularly any sense of fighting. Right. Um, you know? Ugh. I guess it was a way to give everybody their spotlight, right? Without it being too, just feeling too crowded maybe. But I do, I wish they would have all been together, right? Right. Yeah. Like, narratively, it makes sense. I totally grasp mm-hmm. that. Right. Like from a logistic, why yeah. in this reality would they not go, that's an extremely vulnerable corner. Right. Yeah. Or even like Dawn and Xander, that's also a very, like, okay, Xander can like, he's like fought a little bit, but not like, yeah. Yeah, right? Like it feels like, and the, the thing that bothers me also is we do get the moment later where like Dawn and Xander have the trap where they like have the like whatever in the ceiling where there's the hole and it kills them. And it's like, well, then why didn't everyone just wait outside and yep. let them? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't they sabotage the buildings that the, 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 Urukai, whatever they are. The Dothraki, was it? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I called it the Urukai. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, which one of you did call it that? <laughs> I did. It was, I did it in the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like that. What, what, like you said, Adam, it does make narrative sense. It's just like, all these people are human and not like Robin Wood is right. the best fighter yeah. of the Put group. Put some baby right. gates up. Yeah. <laughs> like funnel them through the front door. Boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like it's not like this is, it, it feels like not the same battle strategy they even used for the mayor, which is empty that high school. Right. Yeah. But, like stack it with shit. Yeah. And then like, like kaboom. Yeah. That's her, yeah. So. Yeah, and like, but we won't harp on that because otherwise, whatever. But I even like the beat that we get with Anya and Andrew. She's like, good, yes, I'll use him as a human shield. And he's like, I have a speech. I just want to thank my, like, that would be fucking me. I would be like, well, I'm just emotional to be here. And like, (laughs) are we, are we Andrew and Anya? I was just about to say that. (laughs) Well, I think it was me because, like, before we started recording, you you had like twenty minutes of like, well, and here's where I was like, we should be recording this. This is all relevant to the episode. (laughs) Everybody gets a turn. Oh yeah, (laughs) you are not on here. Like, no, you shut your mouth. (laughs) I'm not talking to you until I see you on the other side, bitch. (laughs) Can we talk for a second about the subtlety of Dawn throughout this episode? It's just and how well that works in in the context of the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I really like, and Kirsten, you said it before, but yeah, I'm curious. Speak on it, Kirsten. Yeah, I mean, so so they really struggled figuring out what to do with Dawn's character, especially once the whole key thing was resolved and they're stuck with a teenage character that they don't, they don't know what to do with her. And I really like one of the undercurrents of season seven is Dawn coming into her own. Yeah. And this episode is such a perfect example of that. Like she, she claims her space. She comes back. She's not going to be shuffled off to safety while everybody that she loves is facing this threat. Um, and then, you know, just this, this little moment with Buffy um, where Buffy's like Dawn and then, and, and then Dawn says, anything you say is going to sound like goodbye. And she doesn't let her because Dawn is saying to Buffy, this is not goodbye. This is not over, you right. know. This is not a parting, and yeah. and I love that. It's so it's so strong. It's so sweet. Like yeah, Don Don really, I think, um, in season seven, becomes the character that she could have and should have been all along. And I am never annoyed by her. Yes, yeah. yes. And she does yes. refer to herself as Junior Watcher. Yes, yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah. So actually, we're gonna do a little reading here of our final scene with the Scoobies all together. Uh, Dana will be playing Dawn. Uh, Adam Sass will be doing Giles. Zach will be doing Xander. Kirsten will be doing Willow. And I will be doing Buffy. Um, Dana, we take it away. Now? Yeah, we're doing it. Oh my it. God. Yeah. I don't even have Everybody the script get your pulled sides. up. Get your sides ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, don't edit that out. I love this. It's, <laughs> it's a cold reading. <laughs> Showtime panic. <laughs> uh, Dana, start whenever you're ready. I'm going to check out our field of engagement. Dawn. No. 
Anything you say is going to sound like a bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sound of Dawn's <laughs> chunky heels. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do tomorrow? Nothing strenuous. Well, many golfs, although was the first thing that comes to mind. No, I think we can do better than that. I was thinking about shopping, as per usual. Oh, there's an r and in the new mall. I could use a few items. Well, now, aren't we going to discuss this? Save the world to <laughs> go to the mall? I'm having a wicked shoe craving. Aren't you on the pitch? Those never work. Here I am, invisible to the eye. See, I need a new look. It's this whole eye patch thing. Oh, you could go with the full black secret agent look. Or the puffy shirt, pirate slash. The earth is definitely doomed. <laughs> good job, everyone. And I Yay. love this scene so much. It's so good. emotional. Um, that was Slayer Fest 98's final ever. Stop it. Sur- Stop. Surprise. <laughs> We're <ending> this yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> Listen, we still got two more to come in this episode. Um, but so no, no, no. they, I love that they like, uh, it's, it's a nice moment of like, you know, Kirsten, you said this about with uh, Spike and Buffy in Touched, how like the warriors before they're going into battle. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what this feels like, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and then the parallel of like, Giles said that at the end of, you know, the first two episodes and him saying it again. Uh-huh. I remember like immediately being like, oh my God, that's what Giles says. And like crying when I watched this live, just <laughs> I was like, oh, like, the, like, I love, I love a parallel. Uh-huh. And so I don't know. I, I just really like that. Yeah. Um, so we see I, even the like, God, it's when they're like splitting up and they they even do the walk like they do at the end of Harvest, right? Giles walks towards the screen, Buffy, Willow, and Xander walk away from the screen. Even like they're like subtle best friend moments of like, she holds Xander's hand. Like yeah. this like this like friend intimacy, like ugh, mm-hmm. I could cry. Yeah. Like I love that shit. So then, then where do we go? Uh, Kirsten, where do we go? <laughs> so then we, you know, we have our core four, then we split up. So we've got all of the potentials and Buffy, down at the seal, and I have my note that says, don't cut your palms, dummies. <laughs> oh my God, the bloodborne illnesses. They all share the same knife. I, it freaks yeah. me out. And why are you cutting your palm? You need to fight. You need to grasp swords. Cut the top of your arm. Like, come on. Right? You have Absolutely. Like, where's the Purell? Just, just Purell that damn thing. Yeah. You know? I would love to see a show or whatever that does, like, everybody cuts their palms and they spend the rest of the episode just trying to grab, like, a banister. They go, God. <laughs> like, ooh, I can't hold the scythe, it hurts. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, then we get our bad CGI, the seal opens, and then we get our Lord of the Rings music. Yes. Yes. Wait, 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 when the seal, when the seal opens, <laughs> I can just imagine Elias Adushka and Sarah Michelle Keller having to pretend to walk down the stairs like you did when you were a little kid. This <laughs> 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 Austin Powers. You <laughs> 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 can tell they're doing it. I'm a die streamed. <laughs> Stop it. I'm going to pee my pants. <laughs> um, so Spike has a really good line. I love Spike like fiddling with his like trinket. Um, and he's like, he says like, oh, I, I, I like, I f- look like Elizabeth Taylor. But like, Trinket's not working. I look like Elizabeth Taylor. And Faith has the line of, cheer up, Liz. If Willow's big spell doesn't work, doesn't matter what you wore. Like, I really like that. So and I like perfect. that Buffy's also ignoring them, right? Buffy, yeah. we allow Buffy to be nervous, and it, it's okay, right? It's not, yeah. it's not too much, but it makes sense that she's like, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Like. It, this is her biggest plan to date, right? She's faced a lot of apocalypses, apocalypse. Um, but like, this is the first time she has like a huge plan to enact, right? And she's risking getting kicked out of her house again. Like she's got to be on her computers, okay? Um, this is the battle that should have been the hour long Lord of the Rings yeah. battle. We should have gotten a full right. hour long real battle. All of these potentials that like we've recognized, you know, Rona, all of them mm-hmm. should have had their own little spotlight mm-hmm. um, so that right lasted back. a little longer, like a minute to two minutes each, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. And we see them really successful at first, you know, until, you know, later on when Buffy like goes down and then, you know, she's seeing everybody dying around her. And then we go back to those same girls and their second spotlight is, you know, them either going down or like struggling, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there was so much room for all of that. And yeah. yes. Jeez. I would say logistically, my biggest issue with this is 
standing there waiting for Willow's spell to work? Yeah. Why didn't they wait for Willow's yeah. spell to work? A, and then sure. they were to work a little bit, like, you know? There was no reason. There was no logistical reason for them to open the seal first. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Swear to God. I, I mean, again, it's like one of those things where like, we could have done the spell outside. Everyone waits outside. and yeah. Yeah. Or at the, the you know, it had to be over the Hellmouth, didn't it? Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah, well, yeah. Whatever. But you know, uh, they didn't have to open the seal first. And I get what he did it for drama, but you know, just like, that was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to um, tell Buffy she's stupid a little bit more? Just go ahead, dog pile yeah. over. Okay. <laughs> bad, bad idea. Maybe she's they were right to kick you out of the house. You can't <laughs> stay here. <laughs> so when then, uh, this is where like I don't stop crying for like the rest of the episode. Same. Um, so like, I love that we get like Buffy's like I'm not worried as long as they don't see us, and then they do see them. They run, and then we get Willow doing her spell and. Fuck, like, ugh, I could cry just talking about it. Like, the image of, like, we don't get the white hair till after, but we get Willow saying, like, oh, my goddess. And I don't know, it like, in saying it out loud, it's like, oh, that sounds cheesy, but, like, it works, right? Like, Willow so would works. say that. Yeah. And now, a reading from yours truly, Philip Ellis, Angela Rockstar, Kimberly Ann Southwick, Joe Reed, Anthony Oliveira, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Alistair J. Patton Garcia, and Summer Bischel. So here's a part where you make a choice. What if you could have that power now? In every generation, a slayer is born. Because a bunch of men who died thousands of years ago made up that rule. They were powerful men. This woman is more powerful than all of them combined. So I say we change the rule. I say my power should be our power. Tomorrow, Willow will use the essence of the scythe to change our destiny. From now on, every girl in the world who might be a slayer will be a slayer. Every girl who could have the power will have the power. Can stand up. Will stand up. Slayers. Every one of us. Make your choice. Are you ready to be strong? And God, that... The, the reading is so, like, that speech, again, it's one of those things where, like, I, I get what you mean, Kirsten, like, eh, why did we have to cut? But, like, fuck, it, it works, it so, works right. so well. Like, uh, I, as much as it's a narrative cheat, it's a narrative cheat that I can accept because it is so powerful and it works so well. And, yeah, I absolutely teared up, too. Yeah, like, watching all of the potentials, like, uh, a thing that I thought of that I really never thought of before that, like, I guess, and like, fucking duh, but so I've been going through season seven with my mother who loves Buffy, but can't remember shit. So all this is basically new to her. She only remembers that Anya dies and Spike dies because she loves them so much. That's all she remembers about the finale. But like every time we record, my mom is like, I hate these potential girls. They are so whiny. They're useless. They don't help. And like, I never realized how much of that was probably on purpose, right? It probably mm -hmm. was for this payoff, this exact payoff that they were useless and whiny the entire season, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. And, like, they are girls who got thrown into this in a couple months, right? Like, yeah. remember this. Remember yeah. that they were not prepared for seven years for, for something right. like this. So, And they're they, also, like, 15, 16. Yeah. And, but Buffy gives them something she never got. Yeah, right. yeah. A yeah. choice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Ugh. And the power there, right? The power Ooh. with the choice. Sorry, and, I yeah. gave myself chills with that. I like posture <laughs> dramatic effect and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna start balling. I, seriously, I'm like <laughs> watching watching these girls like who had been useless and whiny. All like when Vi says like these guys are dust, and we just yeah. see them all like kick ass mm -hmm. is so good. And then we get this ugh, cry. The, we, the visual of like. When we see Kennedy's head going up and she's like realizing she has the power and then she looks at Willow and is like, Ugh. There's Ugh. something about Kennedy's shirt top at this at this point too that like really adds to her flip. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. This is not going to make any sense. But her flipping <laughs> up and her top just like adds to her whole something. It, has, it looks like it has cool, little, cool armor, right? Yeah. Because it has a little like she would have like move. snapped her suspenders, that would have been even cooler. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's her power that's her coming into her power <laughs> <laughs> but we get the visual of like willow with her white hair and her crying mm. uh, uh. it's just like 
I don't know a better like that's what Willow deserved, right? Yeah. Like I feel like I'm what? I'm tearing up. <laughs> well, then you get into the season eight comics. We don't talk about seasons. <laughs> no, no, no. I am good with it. We're gonna have a whole something for season eight. Kirsten, <laughs> oh, I should say it's it's so healing and powerful, right? Because for so long, Willow has viewed this power inside of her as inherently destructive and yeah. and and corrupted right yeah. and so for her, her to have this moment of, of intense connection and and giving it, because it, it's a, it's a selfish magic right it's it's giving yeah. power to other people she's not getting it yeah. um it is it's a really beautiful moment and it's a really healing moment that she gets to come full circle and be like no this this power that i have inside of me isn't isn't inherently bad yeah not something that i have to be afraid of and you know, Kennedy's like, you are you are a goddess, and Willow hands her the scythe and is like, and you're a slayer is just mm-hmm. yeah. I love it. <laughs> and all um, of the potentials getting their powers. You know, there's dolly shots of them, you know, panning yeah. by everybody and everybody's like feeling it. And you know what I really like about this is even though this is not an hour long fight, right? Um, we're not focused on the I don't ever like really notice the potentials that I don't recognize, right? It's mm-hmm. all like the the ones who have been there are are very well highlighted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say there are a few that I'm like, mm, who's that? But we do at least get <laughs> like highlights of the yeah. ones we know. Um, we get Felicia Day on, on oh wires. My God. She's, yeah. I almost said she slays. Felicia Day <laughs> as Violet, she kicked some serious ass in this yeah. finale. Yeah. 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 If, and if, like, if Faith had ever had a, a spinoff, I have a feeling Violet would have been part of her team. Oh, which yeah. which potentials yeah, do you think would have showed up in that spinoff? Rona and Violet for sure. Yeah, yeah, and Ke- I feel like and Kennedy because I feel like Kennedy and Faith like would make sense as like a duo together. And the potentials really liked her, so they would have followed yeah. her. Like a couple yeah. of them would have followed Faith. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we get all this, and it just uh, you're right, Zach. It should have been an hour long fight because it really. I mean, we'd never. They really like they use their budget on this. They yeah. like mm-hmm. it. Uh, there had never been such a like well orchestrated huge fight with that many moving pieces on Buffy before. Which episode would you have taken out, Ian, in order to give them a two hour finale? Uh, if I had to pick an episode, I think it would probably be first date. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because that that's like the, in the middle there, we get a li- like I actually like the beginning. I know Kirsten does it, but I like I love the first like mm, like seven ten episodes. I think it gets a little muddled in the middle where like an episode title might not even make sense with the episode because it's like, that's the C plot of the episode is a title, but then we have A and B is moving all the pieces to get to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kind of condensed. Killer and Me and First Date could have been one episode in itself. Um, But okay, so we get, it's just, and the music, ah, the music is like, also never, like, Hush has the best, I think, like, music, like, soundtrack Mm -hmm. score, but this also, like, I would say this is probably tied, like. It swells. Yeah, it really does. And like, you know, uh, Kennedy throwing Buffy the scythe and her just like chopping those fucking heads off. I love it. Yeah. Um, so then we cut to my beloveds, Anya and Andrew. Mm. Um, I love this moment. I, the, I wish Andrew had gotten a little bit more to do because also it's like, well, why didn't he die? Cause he, yeah. Um, but I, Anya here, I love that she gets her like, at least like a final, like hero moment, right? Because she lifts that when he says bunnies. And I, I her whole thing of like, oh God, I, I'm terrified. I thought you would be terrified. And I would just be sarcastic. Like I I feel like that's me. Like I feel like I was like <laughs> <laughs> um and I just I lo- also love, I mean Adam, we talk about this a lot. Like Andrew very much is like uh, portrays the anxious gay so well, right? Because he's just like not right. shutting up. <laughs> Just yeah, just blabbermouth. Um, just like full blab. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing. Like, like so, I know, I know they did all this with the two of them. You know, I get it near everything. Um, mm-hmm. so you know, but it is like you know, it, I don't know. It is you know, you have your sort of like two least heroic kind of characters, <laughs> I guess, other than you know, like Xander and Dom. But like those two are just so you know like you know they're they're a little more humorless about their um useful right. uselessness um <laughs> i feel like you have like a very i feel like you have a very good like I'm, I'm gonna do a dissertation on this by the way um <laughs> where you have like you have anya and andrew and don and xander all four of them in the same sort of powerless bucket um mm. 
and two of them are big drips about it and two of them are pretty fun um and it is kind of a good way of like kind of looking at like okay well how do you want to how do I, how do you want to interpret your own shortcomings in life um so that is kind of like why i'm a little salty about like someone from this thing but again like and eh, you couldn't kill Xander and you couldn't kill Don. Be yeah. And so like, it is one of those things where, um, and I was, and I was checking out the wiki on this um, episode where uh, Emma Caldwell had announced prior to season seven that yeah. this was her last season, regardless yeah. of if this was Buffy's last season or not. So um, I think she was definitely feeling a post hell's bells sort of like, all right, yeah. we're, we're done with this character. Um, yeah. So I get it, and I know, and I know that um, also that you know Joss had really wanted to have like you know these big heroic deaths, but then also sort of the reality of war, which is just like some sometimes a beloved person is just sniped, and there's no moment, and it's just right. awful. But then it makes um, it feel like mean that that's why they kept her around, so that because they just kept her like ass making mm-hmm. like you know funny jokes in the living room, and only to get her to the end to right. to give us that big character kill for somebody we really love. I don't accept it. It's not, not I don't accept it either, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because she gets cut through from the back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Mm-hmm. And I, when I watched it again, to me, that feels so cowardly. And she deserved to like fight in battle, not be taken yeah. by surprise. Yeah, she yeah, was a powerful that, like, convention statement. Like this, mm-hmm. this. She, she, I get that at times during her human life, we get her as kind of a little bit of a coward. They they could try to paint her as that sometimes, but she was not. She's been living for like thousands and thousands of years, and and you know, I mean, she's killing people, but she's brave. You know, she's not a coward. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I mean, but that's the thing. I feel like they. I feel like again, I I get this sort of creatively where it's like there are like not everyone's yeah. gonna get a giant moment and everyone's gonna get what they deserve. This is like unless it was yeah. an hour long fight. I don't this, know. Well, I mean, right, <laughs> but like I mean, but again, like I mean, like this is sort of the senselessness of, of yeah. war. Yeah. Yeah. Is like there's just gonna be someone who does not get the ending they deserve, and that's sort of its own story we're telling i know this is like this it feels weird saying that right now about a, about buffy now that there's like a, a real war going right. on as we're recording this but like it this is the meaninglessness of yes. battle i um, that that is the only reason because i will say even watching it for this i've seen this episode so many times i still like i i was like a like a woman from a tv show in like the 50s where like i like put my hands to my cheeks and went oh no like still watching this as <sighs> if i didn't know it was coming and it's still like i then i cry consistently through the end of the episode once on yeah. gets slashed i do i see what everyone's saying but i do agree with adam i do think it's a shame but her and andrew were the only expendable characters and yeah. andrew wouldn't have been as emotional right andrew would have been like ah he wouldn't have been an emotion as emotional and everyone was forecasting that this was yes. a surprise. This yeah, is the st- one thing in the, I, th- I say this is full ass. The one thing in this episode that actually is a surprise. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is emotional and satisfying and a closure and did it. This is the only twist. I yeah. Think, right. in and the, Andrew the would have gone the way of the Dodo. Right. If, if Robin hadn't showed up. Right. Right. Yes. And like, I, 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 I just think Andrew wouldn't have carried any emotional weight. Like, it would have been like, oh, but like it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been like crying the way I cry over Anya. Right. I would have been right. sad, like, oh, that, that sucks, you yeah. know, because we know he does, he does worm his way into our hearts. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the gravitas of having Anya go, I mean, but yes. what if they would have just, because I, 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 I really, okay, so I, I said at the top of this episode, this episode has no, <laughs> I have no problems with it. I do have a problem with this. I have a very, very <laughs> big problem with it. Um, I have a problem with seeing it like that. And I think it would have even been more effective to have seen him like huddled somebody, one of the potentials grabs him on the way out. And then we see her body just like there. Um, yeah. yeah. I would yeah. have been think, more okay with that than how we, how we saw it. I think the shooting it like the D-Day in Saving Private Ryan kind of mm-hmm. moment, like having it be so fast and mm-hmm. you don't get up. Here's the thing. Like, I don't think it needed to be a moment. I'm, I, again, like I, I'm, I'm fully aware that like you could, I'm, if you, the kill was done, I think in the filmmaking point of view, had there been any sort of like after care moment with mm-hmm. that character, other than, at the very, very end when Xander is searching for her and can't even like see her 
like just doesn't recognize that her body is like kind of yeah. somewhere laying there. Um, had there maybe been a moment of like, because again, this is early two thousands. You you can stylize that. Yeah. You can slow the camera speed down and have a slow motion fall and the music gets all woozy. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that would have like felt better for people, but I don't know. I feel like from a creative standpoint, there should be something that's upsetting and enraging. In, in it yeah. didn't have and to I be this, this though. I just don't think it had to be this. I feel like the episode know, being yeah. the series finale in its in and of its own, like seeing Buffy's face at the very end, like that's gonna be emotionally upsetting, right? Like I didn't need this to be part of that. I just, I don't know. Take it or leave it, I guess. Yeah. And I will say that I do unfortunately think Ani and Spike make the most sense. Mm -hmm. It is annoying that Spike then is brought back to life literally in the next season of Angel and it totally undercuts this Mm -hmm. and annoys me. But if they had both, and it like makes it annoying that like, okay, then only the woman who died gets to stay dead. Mm -hmm. But in, if we're talking about just this, I do think both of them make sense that like, yeah. you know, in, in end of days, both of them, Spike says to Buffy, let's go be heroes. Anya gives that speech to Andrew yeah. about like why she's going to keep fighting. And I think these ex de- these ex evil demons who are now good and fighting on the good, the side of good yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it does make sense, but I think with our 2022 brains, we can right. also go, I could see where Emma Caulfield was like, I wish not to return to that. Set. <laughs> <laughs> yes, why she might have said that. Yeah, um, uh, I just it's, now I'm thinking about fucking Anya. It's sad, man. You know, she was the only one who was so excited about being human and like getting to experience things for the first time. Really, yeah, so, yeah. I wanted to see her go to a bagel shop or something. <laughs> oh. Zach, that's a very Anya thing to say about Anya. <laughs> uh, I know. I think that's like. I, but I think that's like kind of. I think that's the beautiful thing, though. Is like, yeah, this is like the last human thing to really experience. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, more yeah. disappointed that she didn't come back really in the comics. Um, yeah, because I think like it's a fucking supernatural show. Bring right. her ass back. Yeah, they brought back fucking what's his face? It's like a skinless man. <laughs> yeah, Warren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like clearly dead. <laughs> um so then we yeah like so Robin Wood gets stabbed, we see Amanda fall and then we see Buffy get stabbed and fall like very hard on the ground. And then we I cut to commercial. This is where I remember running into my mom's room. We were both like so upset and so worried that Buffy <laughs> was going to die. Um and we both were like very upset about Anya. I then we get a really good moment, and we're going to have a reading with Summer Bischel doing both the first as Buffy and Buffy. Oh, no. Ow, mommy. This mortal wound is all itchy. You pulled a nice trick. You came pretty close to smacking me down. What more do you want? I want you to get out of my face and like fuck that moment is so good and the music that like i mean we've said it a million times the music is so good in this episode but like that moment particularly when she's getting up and the like determination that Uh, sarah geller like has in her face i needed a documentary about the making of this episode i needed to see like sarah's process and everything (laughs) i just and like her swinging that scythe Mm. and like Oh, it gives me the chills. Mm -hmm. Give Sarah Michelle a fucking Emmy for every goddamn season of Buffy. Like I just, (laughs) and at the same time, but um, Spike's doohickey starts, starts and burning. Right. It's the power Um, of Elizabeth Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) These, these have always helped me out. She's sitting there because she's alive at this time. She's (laughs) she's sitting at her house. Just like, (laughs) why am I in this? Uh, That's what she's saying. But so, do we get his like thing goes off and then Faith's like we all gotta go. I Kirsten, I want your thoughts on this Buffy Spike scene because I love it. Uh, you know what? I love it too. I love his. I love the look on his face when he's like, "I can feel my soul. It's yes. really there." Kind of stings. Like it's funny. It's sweet. It's poignant um, because you know he after he got his soul back, there was so much turmoil and there was so much like you know, manipulation from the first. And so then for him to have this moment of being like, Oh, wow, it's really there. And, and he, you know, he's earned this moment and I love it. Um, I love, 
this moment between them. I love, and, and I think it's really similar to her scene with Angel in that it does exactly what it should. Yeah. Um, when she says to Spike, I love you. And she's giving that to him as a gift. And he's saying, essentially, no, you don't, but thanks for saying that. He's saying, <sighs> he's basically telling us like, I don't need that in order to do this for you. I don't need yeah. anything from you. I'm doing this because I love you and I want you to continue to exist and I want the world to continue to exist. And so we finally have a spike who is no longer doing things to try to make Buffy love him. He's no longer doing things with an ulterior motive. He is, he is, he has a soul, right? And it's such like, it's such a great moment. It's, I love it. Um, I do have in my notes that um, I'm super on my period right now, but all of these things are making me oh, cry. Me too. Oh, yeah. My gosh. yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe this is why we're on our periods. Right. Um, <laughs> it totally started early. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to say, so from an acting perspective, mm. the fact that Sarah Michelle Gellar did not get an Emmy or an Emmy nomination for this episode. Okay. And I'll right. tell you exactly why. Okay. In the moment where she says, I love you to Spike. As an actor, she has a number of choices, right? She could have done like the fierce, like eyes, like the I'm scared and frustrated and angry and like, I, I, you know, I love you. She could have done a whole bunch of things, but instead she gives us these soft, wavery oh, eyes yeah. that we know <laughs> she is not telling us and telling him the exact truth, but there's a grain of it there for her mm -hmm. she just we're just we're just not there mm -hmm. we're just not there with her and the way she those eyes those eyes in that line is fucking perfection um i'll see you guys later now let's continue <laughs> let's, no, let's listen, continue that yeah go adam listen, like, listen here <sighs> is who was nominated for mm. outstanding lead actress in a drama series that year mm. um each one of these, each one of these people taking Sarah Michelle's spot. Okay, so we've got Allison Janney, West Wing, mm. Mark Helgenberger, CSI. Hmm. CSI. Jennifer Garner, Jennifer Garner, Alias. Listen, we were starting to get into genre. That was like we were starting mm. to pivot into that. Listen, that could have been. That could have been. That could have been good. Francis Conroy, Six Feet Under. Mm. Uh, winner, Edie Falco, Carmela Soprano, The Sopranos. So mm. you know, um, probably wouldn't have won because I would have given it to Edie. <laughs> but I but. absolutely say I see vulnerability on this. Not list. even a That's screen actor skill. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's I, I want to talk about that moment. Exactly. I'm so UPN happy. Lacked <laughs> the, I, I, I don't want to speak before all the facts here, but I believe UPN lacked the uh, yeah. ability to effectively financially campaign for mm -hmm. these. Son of a bee. So well, stupid man. <laughs> I want to say, Zach, I know you want to talk about this more because I do too. I cried just hearing you yeah, describe why yeah, it's so I'm, good. I'm flashes in my mind. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I could. I basically have the TV on right now. <laughs> it's, I, but I do want to like go into that performance because I think like this. Every episode should be talking about Sarah's performance. You know, it is. There's such a finality in the way she says it too that like it kind yes. of like is is weird that he's brought back because. It is like she's never going to see him again. There's a moment about, I think about this all the time when I've watched like dramas or anything like that. If there's ever a moment where somebody is not going to, and knows they're not going to see somebody ever again, like that's a heartbreaking like realization. And I think she mm -hmm. nails it so perfectly when, you know, yeah. it's not this big moment where you start screaming and crying or anything. It's this moment where you have to just be, you have to be a little bit stoic, right? And she mm -hmm. has to do that. And it's just the way you fucking described it. It was, it was so perfect. And I yeah. fucking and if you watch love it her. Back, if you watch it back, there's a little turn of her phrase when she says, I love you. It is not an I love you. It yeah. doesn't go down. Yeah. It yeah. almost has a question mark at the end of it. It's so good. It's so subtle. But listen to it again. And you know what? I The way the look on Spike's face. Fuck. When he says, like, no, you don't, but thanks for saying it, <laughs> Ugh, I'm going to cry. But, like, his acting choice, too, I think is really good because he looks so calm and so zen. And, mm -hmm. like, he he understands she's giving that to him as a gift. And he appreciates it, but, like, ultimately, and ultimately it also leads it, leaves it up to us, right? Whether we think she is saying it because I, I go back and forth here where I do, she loves him. I just don't know that she knows hundred percent what that means, mm -hmm. whether it's romantically, whether it's as like, I, I have love for you the same way I have love for Angel or whatever. But I, I, I like that it's not so final, but it's still there and it still works. And like, 
fuck it did the two of them and like even the visual of them holding hands and their hands catching on fire mm. i don't understand why it happens but i fucking love it yeah like, <laughs> whoever came up with it is you know, a plus right? plus 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 plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Twin flames. yeah it's just so good and they they their chemistry in this scene is just off the charts i my mom mm. does not like buffy she does not watch buffy but i remember every time i would watch this finale and that scene would come on i'd look i always made sure to look over at her because i knew she was gonna do this and she would be crying i'd be like <laughs> perfect perfect <laughs> like aha you do like buffy you want to watch so, the rest of the seasons with me <laughs> so we get um spike you know says he's got to stay he wants to see how it ends uh we see Which Faith. Is also <laughs> such a great line such yeah. a great line i yes. want to see how it ends yeah especially as like a final line right yep. right and he becomes the audience proxy right there too <sighs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. and so we, we we see faith running to the bus we we get, you know, that scene that we also we didn't love, which I hate of like Xander being like when Xander's yelling for Anya, I went, oh, like I like get like audibly made like a upset noise because I hate that. And I almost think whichever one of you said it, I it could have worked as like if we didn't see her get slashed, but she is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, but so we, you know, everyone's on the bus. Buffy's got to run. We see Spike. I don't know if any of you remember this, but like they did announce Spike was going to be on Angel season five that week. And I remember being like, wait, he can't die. He's going to be on Angel. Oh, really? They ruined it for you all like that? Yes. Oh, damn, did. man. Yes. Damn. It's, yeah, it's so hard to like do this sort of like cast. <laughs> That's <laughs> Halloween like, Kills marketing right there. Yeah, it was so weird. It was all like right. they had the image of him and Angel together to ready to go as a promo, which like you didn't need to promo the season that early. Yeah. Um, so I don't know why. It almost feels like WB did it to be like, hey, fuck you, UPN. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I can remember like crying, but then being like confused when he turns to like Ash when he starts to like fall apart because I knew he was going to be on Angel. Um, so it is annoying that it undercuts it. And I do think I love Angel season five and I love Spike on Angel season five. He makes it way better. They have a great dynamic in that season. I do think it undercuts his heroic sacrifice. What do you guys think? Yes. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Just comes back. Yeah. <laughs> like- from right, a narrative like, perspective, of course. From a fan perspective, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. there's just I mean, some yeah. things you just don't give a shit. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it does kind of foreshadow, like you know, you know where where you know Joss goes from here into you know Avengers and you know Marvel right, comics right. and all that because it's a very comics thing, especially it's a very X Men yeah. thing to just be like, like no one is dead. Yeah. yeah, ever. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I think about that a lot. With like, anytime I'm reading, I remember there was like uh, when I was consistently reading comics. I had missed uh, like two months. And in those two months, Thor had died and already come back to life <laughs> and being like, Oh, all right, whatever. Like, and that's kind of <laughs> how comics always are. So right. whatever. like how many like Cyclops deaths? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is dead here? The CGI budget, because the scenes where Buffy is running across the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she looks back at a green screen. Most of you know, like, <laughs> but, but this, we, this can be a show that they go back and like fix at some point, right? And like, like make it, but like, but like, don't yeah. do it the way they they did the remaster back then, you know? Just like somebody who loves the show, go in and <laughs> yeah. do something because it's possible. Ooh, yeah, the, oh, I will could, say that the the totally. bus stuff, like sliding around on the bus when it took, when it does that hard stuff, like uh, Fast and Furious stuff, yeah. that's pretty fun. It's fucking cool, yeah, man. Listen, it, I was gonna say this is where my blood really gets going on yeah. this like the, any t- i think i don't i feel like i my thing with buffy is that like when she's fully isolated that's when i'm kind of it's weird it's when i'm most sort of like attached to like her as a character because it's it's very frequently like yeah you know she's kind of buttressed by everybody but i think this moment where she's really really like on her own kind of like everyone else is sort of safe and then she's and then she's got this one last bit like this is where i kind of really get pumped yeah yeah yeah. Um, and I, I do, I, the CGI is terrible, but I do love seeing her. It's cool, right? We hadn't gotten that big of stuff. Like we hadn't gotten a scope like this. And I remember when it cuts to the town being like, wait, what? Yeah. Like seeing the, this like above shot of Sunnydale collapsing mm-hmm. um, definitely wasn't something we had ever gotten before. And the CGI didn't take anybody out of it, right? Like it shouldn't take you out of it. You should still be like, We'd Super already punk, seen. Right? Oh, the... I mean, it was 2003. That was fantastic <laughs> for us. Yeah. yeah, back then it wasn't bad. That's some UPN money right there. Uh, <laughs> it's it's she's just like you know, and I love everybody on the bus. That nobody's really like. It's almost like nobody's concerned for her because 
they know. they know she's capable. She's capable. Yeah. She's going to meet them on the other end. Dawn has that concern, and yeah. she can carry enough of it for everybody. Yeah. Right? That's like, why no one was concerned when they kicked her out of her own house. Uh, yeah. They were like, <laughs> oh, they just I don't know. give a shit about her, right? Or that, or that. <laughs> I, no, I think they were like, they were like, listen, <laughs> get out. They're Did you like, know that uh, that's be- where Airbnb started? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. created that after that. <laughs> no, it's true. It's like when, it's like when you like you, when you like bully a hot person. You're just like they're fine. They'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> bully a hot person. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, no, like, Liz Lemon is revealed to be like the worst bully <laughs> for like everyone in her old class. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the bus does do its like turn, and I, I I know the the final shot is very good, but fuck the the scene of Buffy jumping off the bus and like. It makes me emotional. Like her looking, literally looking at yeah. the road ahead of her and like her like being pretty zen about it, like makes me so happy. Like she, mm-hmm. that's what Buffy deserves, right? right. Like I, I just, I don't know. I think, Kirsten, what do you think about that? I mean, I like, I like all the moments in this. I like you seeing, you know, Slayers taking care of each other. I, I like Robin's fake out death moment. I like that um, when Xander asks Andrew about what happened to Anya, and Andrew yeah. straight up lies. Yeah, yeah. He says she died saving me. She didn't. Yeah, but yeah. I like that he lies about it. I like yeah. that he like. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna give her that, and then you know when Xander says, "That's my girl," always doing the stupid thing. Like uh-huh. it's such a sweet moment. Um, and then I do like that they've established that there's enough wounded people on the bus that it makes sense for us only to have our core heroes standing at the end, like standing at the end of the world, basically. Well, like, people need to breathe there also. Like even yeah. if they weren't injured, just sit your asses on the yeah. bus. We'll give you a juice box and some cold fish. <laughs> yeah. And that little comedy moment of the sign with the squeak, yes. squeak. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I, I, and I just, I'm such a fan of like, of, uh, Trials is there's another one in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh, but, but I think for me, I mean, the last shot of this, this show, I think is absolutely perfect. It makes me cry. It's astonishing. But when, when they say we saved the world and then they say we changed the world, that for me yeah. is so powerful because they've saved the world you know, right. six times. Like <laughs> we've saved the world a whole bunch of times. That's nothing new for them. But when they acknowledge, like, no, we've changed the world. And the way they've changed it is by changing the rules that are governing these young women. And by changing the rules that made Buffy alone, that made Buffy the only one that could do this. And, like, that for me is so powerful. And it's such an incredible ending. And, like, it makes up for all of the flaws and weaknesses in season seven that I have issues with. Like, that right there. Is yeah. it for me? The mark of a great finale, right? It's like they have left a legacy that if they ever did need to bring it back, they don't have to fabricate anything. There's yep. story there. There's there yep. is somewhere to move because they did change the world. And like this is it's it's completely different now, you know? And like the, you, you really gotta think of the scope of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, Kirsten, you you've made me tear up twice with your descriptions <laughs> of scenes that I have watched. It's Kirsten and Dana painting pictures that are making everybody yeah. misty eyed. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. We're, just, um, we're just sharing our period emotions. With you. Yeah. yeah, this is where this is where like I'm sitting here like uh, Jerry Seinfeld in the diner, just start wiping my mouth with the same napkin that everyone's been blowing. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, but like, so uh, I don't know. I I can remember. I, I watching this and being so happy that Buffy got a happy ending because I was very afraid she wasn't going to. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the fact that she doesn't even say anything, but like, you know, when Giles asks, like, who did this? And she says Spike, but that's it. She's just kind of yeah. like, she feels relieved, and we feel that from her that she's like, I did it. I fucking mm-hmm. did it. Like, mm-hmm. but she's also not alone in the world anymore. No, yes. She doesn't yeah. have to carry the burden of being the slayer. Because now she has an army of slayers. Yeah. And that's why she fucking smiles. Like, I mean, all this destruction in her wake, but now the world is has changed. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I needed okay, I needed a whole fucking episode right after this of them going to a motel and like figuring <laughs> yeah. out their next move here. What are they gonna do? They need to be at a diner, they need food. You know. <laughs> 
her give an angel a call to let him know what was up. <laughs> oh, I don't give him a call. I just let him think we died. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been really funny if, like, at the very, like, end, like, they just, they were, like, just just on the outskirts of town. Like, the, the school bus just, like, busted maybe one flat tire, flat, flat, flat. They roll up, and there's, like, a motel right there. And, like, Clem comes running out being like, you did it. <laughs> Gosh, that would have been that would have been a good setup in Season 7, too. Is what if, like, Clem opened a motel with, like, a little diner bar attached it on the did. outskirts of town? And they, like, visited that in Season 7. Oh, Adam, you're making me angry. Yeah, so he's, <laughs> like, he's, you know, he's he's trying to run a bee and, uh, uh, you know, bed and breakfast, and, and and uh, you know, there's just some normies coming in there, and he's, like, you know, he's, like, oh, hope you like cat, and they're, like, what? And they're, like, oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> God, um, <sighs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be done here. Right, I'm right. Not, I'm over, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. This is like my log, our longest Slayer Fest recording. This is not even my fucking podcast, Ian. And we still haven't discussed our favorite outfit. (laughs) (laughs) And now with a fashion roundup of the Buffy finale chosen, I have a Buffy costume designer, Matt Van Dyne. Hello, Matt. Well, hi, hi, everybody, and we really are rounding this up, aren't we? I I know we're at. Can you, but Matt? Holy shit! Let me tell you, <laughs> I want everyone to know how patient, how kind Matt has been with his time this entire fucking season. <laughs> you have been so gracious, and I really appreciate it. Oh my goodness! And all and all those. Your bleepable words. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I, of course, I've loved every minute of it. I really have. You, you've just been so gracious with your time and like doing all this with me. I really appreciate it. And it's been well, nice. You're welcome. I, tr- I tried to research and come up with as much as I could to um, enhance mm. the experience. I guess you know for all the fans. I, I've done. I've really tried to do my best. So. <laughs> I hope I. I just hope I don't want. Uh, well, my goal is to never disappoint. So you know, I've got one more to go. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I have to tell everyone. I we've you and I have probably mentioned this in our recordings before, but I need to tell everyone that one of my prized Buffy possessions is when Matt and I started becoming closer. You sent me a swatch from the jacket mm. you designed That's for true. Sarah, That's and I true. still have it. Up in my room with my Buffy memorabilia. Yep. <laughs> Can you believe I have the, these things? I mean, I can't believe that I have a lot of, of what I do. It is wild, have yeah. From 20-some <laughs> years ago. Yeah. I mean, today, I found the uh, crew call sheet for the very, almost the last. I guess it was when we were shooting out of town, doing all the, the, the stuff with the bus in the high school. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I found hmm. that call sheet. But I couldn't That's believe I still had that. Was that the last scene they filmed or no? It wasn't as a, as I, w- well, I don't think so. Cause then I go back to, I think they call it, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> uh, it looks to me as if we were shooting back on the sound stages, wrapping up on which days, April the 16th and 17th. Hmm. And those were after, uh, yeah. the, um, the location shoot. Okay. So I'm th- I'm thinking the location shoot was on a was that on a Thursday or a Friday? Friday, probably Thursday and Friday. And then we came back to the studios on Monday and Tuesday. But I think Easter fell in between. I remember something about okay. Uh, but, but yeah, so- I, I mean this is uh yeah Sarah's jacket that is a uh, a big uh, factor in this final episode, isn't it? I mean, as it turns yeah. out. I mean, yeah. Matt, you did this, the outfits in this episode, I feel like you did such justice to these characters knowing oh. it was like their last time out. Everyone looks, especially the women look oh. fantastic. Oh, that's so humbling. Thank you so <laughs> much. I really, I really do appreciate it. And I, my uh, thanks always goes out to the fans for showing their appreciation. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that people are still appreciating the work all of these years later. Yeah. And when I do screen the episode, which I did uh, earlier this week, mm. uh, as I, I think I said before to you, it's always a surprise. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't keep it in the forefront of my mind, but when mm. I go back and look at it, which it had been quite a while since I had looked at it, I, w- I was, uh, I was uh, happy with it. I thought, uh, because I, I've seen still photos from the right. episode. Right. 
And I don't think they do it justice, really. I think the you know what we see in the episode is you know live action. I mean, it does it does play well, and I, I'm just thrilled that uh, I got to be a part of it. And uh, you know, it means a lot to me that uh, everybody has reached out and let me know that you know they've appreciated the work. Matt, you are you are so sweet. <laughs> well, it's it's true, and. And I and and I I want to you know throw some of that praise that comes to me to my crew and uh, the people that uh, the department that I had that made this all come together uh, because it was huge. Uh, looking at the show, I was like, wow, this is a really big episode, and it it took a lot of preparation. Uh, I was looking back, I I was given. Uh, um, kind of a dry run of what was coming about March the 7th of that year. And I don't think we started shooting that episode to the end of March. It was. So I had a few weeks, you know, a couple of weeks to uh, kind of look ahead. And, but, you know, like uh, making all of the vampire costumes uh, that was in the works for uh, many weeks prior to even the okay. first of March. And I found something that was kind of interesting that we handed out. I had extra help coming in that day to dress all of the, we call them the Uber vamps. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> we, but I had a lot of extra help coming in and I actually had two friends. Well, they're friends now, but I didn't really know them that well. It was somebody who had reached out to me, a friend of mine who said, I have two friends who are the biggest Buffy fans. How could they, yeah, you know, possibly even visit the set or do this or that. Mm-hmm. And I think it was my uh, cutter fitter, Shirley, who came up with the idea. She said, well, we're going to need a lot of help dressing these people and just <laughs> don't say anything to the union, but we'll just do it, you know, in our <laughs> offices. So they never went out on the stages, but I had some friends come in and they got to help dress these Uber vamps. Oh, that's cool. And we ha- I had a, a, a sheet printed up about uh, how to dress them. So mm-hmm. they had like a guide how to, to apply the different layers of the costume. But I also have uh, uh, a guide to how to make these costumes. And it was really kind of interesting because, you know, every layer of the costume, of which I think there was, I would say four, because there was a bodysuit underneath that we made. And then there was uh, a the lower layer, the middle layer, and the top layer go- going from the feet to the head. And as we would apply those, we would paint at least three layers of paint on all of that leather. But before we even did that, uh, the bodysuits <laughs> were all dyed, I think, at least twice. But it, And then every piece of leather that was added to the leather, there'd be like leather lacings, leather straps, leather this, that, whatever, you know, whatever. That was all painted as well, separately. We added real bones to to the <laughs> to the Uber vamps, and those were tea dyed in tea to age them, and mm. they would be dyed overnight. And then you know we would add you know certain uh, holes, uh, drill holes into those, so we could sew them on to the costume. So it was it was it was labor intensive. Let me tell you. So, Jeez. So coming up with that, yeah, and then just making leggings, and that was a whole separate thing for uh, the Uber vamps. You know, just that they had those uh, different layers underneath. But yeah, it was it was quite a uh, you know a, a project because even though there was a lot of CGI, there were still you know many right. many a- actors you know yeah. you know actually there in the scenes. And uh, and then you know on top of that, all of the the fighters, the potentials who were you know in the scene to fight them. So all of those people had to be you know uh, dressed and doubled and tripled, you know, for you know the fights and the blood. And you know there was a lot of going on in the you know in the fight. So you know we had to be prepared for that as well. And then as you said dressing the principles on top of it well that's just the icing on the cake you know to make everything resonate as i hoped it would with the fans because yeah. uh in that episode my concept was that the character buffy was the light in all of this hopeless mm. darkness 
Mm. And that uh, is how I perceive her look. And I wanted her to stand out like that in the episode, which I think ultimately she does. Yes. Uh, Because everything around her is more in muted tones, except for Willow, who Mm. also does the, uh, you know, brings the light to the. Yeah. Like literally. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Literally to, to the, uh, the story. But yeah, I mean, there are so many stories about this episode. I I remember quite a bit about it there. David brought in two shirts that were his favorites to wear in the episode Two, They were, I think we had choices, but I chose that shirt. It's like a grayish kind of sheer fabric shirt. And we, I think we made the stunt double of it as I recall. Well, the story goes that (laughs) my one set costumer Oh, I don't know what she was thinking, but she put the wrong shirt on the stunt double. She put the hero, we call it the hero shirt, oh, on the stunt double. And then he slides on the floor. Well, that's going to rip that shirt. Right. <laughs> so we made good on it, though. We fixed everything. But but that, I remember I couldn't believe that you know that mistake had been made. <laughs> it was so obvious which was the stunt and which wasn't. And I won't tell you which costumer did that. But, <laughs> but yeah, there, 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 there were so many things in the episode that I remember. I remember Michelle Trachtenberg begging me to, to wear Marc Jacobs, <laughs> which was that. She loved Marc Jacobs. And, uh, you know, so we came up with that zippered top that she's wearing that I think she wears with some faded jeans, as I recall. They're but, like dark, uh, yeah. Yeah, they are, right? I thought so. So, you know who's, whose clothes I think cost the most? In that huh. episode, were Anya's. Oh, really? Yes, because I put uh, Richard Tyler, who was a, a prominent designer at the time, on her Richard Tyler jacket and mm. Re- Rebecca Taylor pants and a Richard Tyler fuchsia top underneath. But, you know, she got pretty right. messed up in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, as it turned out, poor Anya, you know, bites the dust in this episode. And, and I love that jacket on her, Matt. I think it looks fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you. And But, you know, I, I'm going to share an interesting thing about the jacket that Sarah wears. Okay, that, hit me. So... <laughs> When I was looking at my notes and, you know, I purchased the fabric and I worked, you know, with Sarah, you know, to come up with the design. But, you know, I chose the the suede's and all that, you know, that we ultimately used. Yeah. And when I went to this uh, leather house here in L.A., which still exists, I think the name of it is Caudel's, I believe it's the name of it. That suede. I, at first, it kind of rocked me when I looked at the price, what I paid for that suede to make okay. the jacket. Mind you, I had to make, you know, you have to, the way you pick out suede is you have them lay out the skins, several skins there, because it's real skin, you know. So, And you have to find which ones have the least defects in them because they're not man-made. This was a real thing. Mm. So, um, you know, in choosing that, you know, picking out the best choices – I have my receipt for what the jacket cost and if, or the, the suede pieces cost. And at first it kind of, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Well, we know the number 666, mm-hmm. you know, in biblical prophecy right. and all of that. Well, the price of this, the suede ended up being $666.50. <laughs> and I thought, isn't it interesting that in the fight of good versus evil, right? That that jacket, which is so prominent in the episode and has come to represent, you know, the good overpowering evil, yeah. That that's the price. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that that's the number. I know that, it kind of rocked me. I hadn't even really realized that until recently. Oh, really? But, yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. Hmm. And I looked at that, I found the receipt, and I went, oh my goodness, wow, how about that? <laughs> especially, especially since the first is kind of like a metaphor for the devil, oh, right? yes, yes, a hell yeah. mouth. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm curious, Matt, how did you, what What made you, I know you said you were looking to make her more the light in the darkness, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and you, you did say Sarah was a little bit, like, had, was involved with, like, picking yes, out. I what, mean, you know, about, you know, kind of like, you know, she had the input, I'll put it that yeah. way, you know, as to, as to what, you know, how she saw it. And then, and then, you know, I just take, you know, my interpretations and hers, and I take that to a drawing board. And then I sit and sketch and come up with a look, you know, something that I think that, you know, is right for the episode, right for yeah, the character, yeah. right for 
the actress, <clears throat> something that kind of puts a ribbon on everything at the end. You know, that was that was kind of the you know the impetus to come up with uh, something like that. But yeah, uh, just what I like about it, <clears throat> and what I thought was interesting, was the dichotomy of the softness of somebody mm-hmm. with Sarah's look. The blonde, yeah, you know, the beautiful fair skinned girl, mm. and then this, you know, the muted blue jeans, the white lacy shirt, you know, lace to fight a battle, <laughs> and pink with like little eyelet cutouts. I mean, it's the antithesis of going in with the bombardier jacket or whatever, you yeah, know? yeah. That's that was why I did that. And I've never really voiced that before, but that's why I did it. I wanted it to be the opposite because you know, opposites are much more interesting. Yeah, yeah, that that is yeah. interesting, Matt. I, how many do, did you have to do a lot of different sketches before you landed on this one? No, uh, not much. No, no. I just, I, I just kind of know. I mean, you know, just there wasn't a whole lot of time to really belabor that, you know. So, and that's kind of how I work. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a person who brings in a thousand different ideas or even 10 or 15. I think, as I said, you know, like earlier talking about David shirt, bring it down to two, two things, you know, and I'll (laughs) say, you know, this versus this, you know, because I think that confuses a lot of people when you're working collaboratively, collaboratively Mm -hmm. like that, because it's like, I don't know. I, I don't find order in that kind of chaos. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I have always had pretty much a specific idea. And, you know, that idea sometimes may come out to not be what somebody wants. But, uh, you know, but I'll, I'll defend it <laughs> <laughs> to, to the last breath. But the, in this case, I didn't have to because it worked. You know, yeah. when you have everybody else, you know, in kind of uh, battle fatigue looking, you know, you know, to have her just be the opposite is just, I, I, to me, that's gold. I just, I just thought, well, that, that's the way to go. You know, that's, that's, I, I love that you like kind of knew you were just like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I just kind of know. Huh. You know, I, I was going to ask you how you felt about the finale because I do really love it. I think it's a very, I don't think a lot of shows land a finale so well, but I do, do think. They? I know. Most don't, I don't think. Yeah. But yeah, this show I thought had a, a really nice finale and I love that close up on Sarah at the end and just Ugh, a little makes me cry every time. Yeah, that little lift of the 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 mouth to the side smiling. You know, and and we we talked about that. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, it, it just like Buffy deserved a happy ending. Yes. Yeah. And but it's not beating you over the head with a happy ending, but it is. Oh, and didn't she play it well? Ugh, I mean, Sarah she did. She Sarah always well. nails it, but she really nails it here. She with always like, nails it. So I, I really like the way even Kennedy. I really like yeah. that top you give her that has the little like I don't know the what white. you would call them, right? Little tassels or something. The oh the 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 olive color. Yes, I, actually, I found that top in my notes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. Oh yeah. I, I thank you, Ian. That is such a compliment because <laughs> when I was watching it, I I didn't remember that, and I saw oh, really? that, and I went, oh god. I love that detail. That was a great detail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's a great detail. Yeah. And it works so well for when she becomes a slayer and she like lifts her head up and her hair and the little like tassels like go up. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. (laughs) And the color looks good with her skin tone too. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I even liked her in the white little rib top. It had the ribbing on it. That's what I like the texture of it. I saw that. (laughs) <laughs> Kennedy, I'm thinking with the black suspenders. Um, I do I, like I, that outfit too. Yeah, yeah. And I, I looked and I when they zoomed in, I went, "Oh God, I love that detail, the ribbing on it. There's <laughs> texture, you know, which I love texture on the screen <laughs> too." So, but so, and you also you also made Willow very light too. Um, yes, yes. Well, uh, interestingly enough, the first jacket I found I found that was a uh, okay. I, I found that at Saks Fifth Avenue. That's where that came from. But uh, but then later, yes, the the light. You yeah. know, the, I, I'm going to give a shout out to my shopper Lorna because she and I worked together on coming up with something like that. You know, mm-hmm. it's special. It looks yeah. special, and it's a special moment. So yeah, and like you know, I got I cry so much in this episode. But when she gets her moment, and that top really helps with like oh, the white and hair and the white hair. I yeah, know. God bless the hairdressers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and the makeup people. I mean, really, and like I said, it's a collaborative industry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing that stood out for me in this episode, and I may have told this before, and I apologize, but uh, when uh, Eliza wears the red tank top in, uh-huh. in the scene, I remember that day specifically where she, she and D.B. Woodside are, you know, uh, with the filing cabinets and all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember going on to the set that day, and she was wanting to change out of her outfit and into something different. And I, and I said, well, okay. I said, we have, you know, I'm not going to, you know, make you do, wear anything that you're uncomfortable in. And she goes, well, I'm not uncomfortable in it. I just want to, you know, uh, you know, and I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, when I set up an episode, I, I do with the whole arc of the episode. So I know who's wearing what in each segment of the story. I said, and you're the only one I have dressed in this bright red in this, you know, to make a statement at this time, at this point in the in the episode. So I said, "Bet if you want to change out of it, I said that's fine." But <laughs> I mean, and she and she, she changed her mind because because it was to make her the focal point at that point in the episode. Yeah. You know, that was yeah. that was part of the the idea behind the colors and everything. So, but I remember specifically talking with her. In front of this filing cabinets, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> and there it is. You know, I can see it on the screen. Well, I do remember correctly. There were filing cabinets there. I gotta ask you though. Uh, I mean, I feel like I know the answer, but what's your okay. favorite outfit that you put? What's your favorite outfit from the finale that you did? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I always feel I have to say. <laughs> uh, well, Sarah's. You know, yeah. <laughs> the outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the is that is that jacket the only thing that you like built for one of the main cast members for that? Well, of course we built all the the Uber Right. Band, yeah. 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 So I would say that Sarah's outfit is probably my favorite. I mean, all. it is pretty damn iconic, Matt. <laughs> well, as it turned out, you know, it has to be because you right. know that was um, the one that resonates so much with the fans, and and you know, and, and I love Willow's outfit. I love that outfit too. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I loved her her jacket. You know, like I said, with the I think it's a corduroy skirt. I think she's wearing brown corduroy. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that, what that was made of. Yeah, I think that's what that is. What what a thrill to to dress <laughs> these beautiful actors, male and female. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Nick and uh, James and and Tom and. And yeah. DB and you know actors. I don't talk enough about the boys, probably, but you know they were they were instrumental in this too. You know, just what a thrill to have these wonderful people wear you know our creations or my creations, yeah. I guess. You know, so. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it was. I, I I thought it was a great experience, and I'm uh, glad. Like I said, that everybody seems to still appreciate it. That's yeah, really, yeah. Really well, well, Matt. Thank you so much. I cannot believe we did this many well, episodes together. I want to thank together. you, Ian, for being so good at what you do. Oh, thank Matt. you so much. Thank you so, so much. You made it a pleasure. You're so professional. And you know what questions to ask. You know how to ask them. And you're just you're just sensational. So Thank I'm you. Just- I... You're going to make me cry. Jesus, everyone's been making me cry. Everyone's been so well, nice about you've been, this. You've been so, so good to me and certainly so good to the, the people who love the show so much. So, you <laughs> well, know, I appreciate it. And I know that. the other people that I worked with on the show that you've spoken with, I'm, I know they feel likewise about you. So thanks. I, I, I really appreciate That's really nice to hear. And I appreciate that. Um, Yes, I cannot thank you enough. This has been really delightful. Like, you know, uh, I'll tell everyone, you know, sometimes we'll record two or three at once. Oh, yes, we did. That's true. This is You were always on. You always knew exactly. You, you came prepared. <laughs> yeah. Well, I try. I, I just, you know, it's and it's been really, we. geez, we've been doing this. I think I took two different breaks. So it's been like, ah, we start, uh, I think we started season seven. Bef- yeah, definitely before the we, pandemic. Well, you right? interviewed me initially for season seven in November right. of 2020. Oof, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, so we've been doing it since then. Yeah, yeah. geez. <laughs> yeah, early, I think it was early November. As yeah, I so I think it was. That was the yeah. like, holidays before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And then the pandemic, and then we kind of blew through that. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, well, Matt, uh, that's right. Uh. It has been a delight, and I'm so going to uh, bother you to see if there's stuff you're willing to let me share. Oh, um, well, of course, <laughs> of course. Well, you know, God bless to all the fans and, and uh, stay safe and healthy and, you know, stay tuned. <laughs> so, all right, Matt. I will be talking to you later, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I'll take care, Matt. Up. Okay, you take care too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
All right. Favorite outfit, Adam? Favorite outfit. Um, you know, I would say, you know, I just, I think, I think Buffy's final outfit really can't, you know, be beat here. Yeah. I think it's, it was practical. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was nice. <laughs> just kidding. It was, it's, it's Dawn's Chucky shoes as she walked through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dana, what's your favorite outfit? No, I love a chunky, pe- chunky piece of costume jewelry. So I almost want a spike, but I'm going to say Faith's red tank top, yeah. black jean or black right. pants. Um, and then the uh, rivet belt, because I had that exact same outfit that I wore to the gay bars in um, in the early 2000s. Well, she and- is the only one of the, of those, like between Buffy and Faith, you can tell Faith has not changed her sort of look since season three, where Buffy has sort of evolved. You can tell, oh, she's going to be wearing that shit until she's like. I was just about to say, and I'm 50s, still wearing. Yeah. I'm still right. wearing that to the gay bar in 2022. <laughs> um, Kirsten, favorite outfit? I will be honest. Um, I do not remember a single outfit from this entire episode. <laughs> really? And I was too busy looking at all of their beloved faces. Fair. Um, fair. Yeah. Fair. I, I, yeah. I genuinely don't remember a single outfit. <laughs> uh, Zachary? Okay. Okay. Um, it's Buffy's. It's Buffy's. It just doesn't... Yeah. Like, the way... It, 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 she's got a final girl outfit here, right? Like she's yeah. got her pants move perfectly when she's running. Her hair goes really well with her outfit. The the little bit of blood that's kind of dripping from her shirt at by the yeah. end, it just all fits together so perfectly. And, and it doesn't matter. She's running around in heels. It doesn't matter. There's no the practicality <laughs> of it doesn't even matter. It just like all fits her. The image for me is for the episode. It's not even the final image. It's her jumping from building to building as the town's yeah. going down and then her jumping onto the school bus. And her outfit and looks flawless in that. But yeah. it's not too dated either. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. whoa, 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 that did not, that's, that's right. definitely but that she's, era. Yeah. Like, she's right. got a cat whisker jean, um, and I'm just noticing it now, which was very popular in the early 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't, what is that? What's a cat whisker jean? I don't know what so that means. So it's like the, it's like the, the bleaching on the jean kind oh, of like, right. in, yeah. I, I, yes, I remember all of my friends wearing those back in the, yes. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, Buffy's outfit is my favorite. I, it's not, I, it just, I, I think you're right, Zach. It's a very final girl outfit. And it even looks like when she's jumping with like the jacket part, like flying in the air, like it works really well. It yeah. flows really well. Um, and it even looks good at the end when, like you said, she's got a little bit of blood and like the beige is a little bit more dirtied, um, which makes sense. I mean, like y'all said in the beginning with Buffy, they're not going to splatter blood on her. They're not going to have them all looking super dirty for this final scene. They like do a little bit of distress. I do think like costume designer did fantastic on this fucking episode because everybody has a little bit of a moment, uh, just about mm-hmm. everybody. You know, Willow's sheer top is is pretty iconic itself, you know? Like yes. that's really good also. Kennedy's shirt is super standout-ish to me. Uh, yeah. Dawn looks fabulous, you yeah. know? Even Xander, that plaid is the perfect plaid for Xander in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that, that dumpy look is perfect for him. I was going to say, my, my like seconds are Willow and Anya's outfits would be my second favorites because I think like they're pretty iconic looks for them. Um, all right. Favorite outfit, uh, Editor Ashley, who has been here the whole time. Ashley, what's your favorite outfit? For me, it's Buffy, but it's not her final outfit. It's when she's giving the, are you ready to be strong? Mm-hmm. That is a cute top. It is. I love the top. Her hair looks yeah. good. I like seven times during that scene when I rewatched it last night, I was like, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. She looks so pretty in this scene. She looks so pretty. <laughs> and I was like, this is, that's definitely my favorite. Outfit. All right. All right. Uh, favorite scene, Adam. Okay. So I think probably a favorite moment. I, I do love kind of her sprinting away. CG aside. Like I, I, that's, I think like that's kind of the, the part of the episode that will like, if you, if you mention the finale, that's the moment. I think. Uh, Ashley? My favorite scene, um, you know, honorable mention to the speech and all the girls getting their power. But for me, it is when after she's been stabbed, when she says, get out of my face and she stands back up and the music Mm -hmm. swells and Rona tosses her (laughs) the side and then she like knocks all of those Uber vamps off the cliff. And that for me was the moment, the first time that I watched it, that I knew like 100% without a doubt, like we're making it through this, like for sure mm. they're done for like this. Ashley, is the now you're so. going to make me cry. Fuck. Um, <laughs> favorite scene. Kirsten. 
uh, that final shot when she's surrounded by her friends and her family and they're all kind of chattering and and looking over the ruins of of this home that she's fought for that has tried to kill her so many times Mm -hmm. and then the camera just gets closer and closer to her face and it's not it's not this like joyful triumphant smile it's just this little hopeful okay yeah okay smile and like oh i love it It, i love it it really is like sam rashad geller god she's so good but she really like i felt like she knew like buffy wouldn't be like joyous like yeah like she would be like a quiet like ah right and that's like her character um perfect zach uh i I don't know if i can pick a favorite scene for this one i think it's (laughs) just my favorite it it is just my favorite episode this is the episode that makes me feel the most powerful you know (laughs) so i'll just i'll have to go with the whole episode all right that's fair i you know, Zach, I love this reversal because I'm always a super emotional one, especially my bloody Y'all Judy. are killing me because <laughs> I am like fucking bawling talking about it. <laughs> Aha, take that, Zach. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Dana, did I call on you? I can't remember. Favorite scene? You did not. You okay. did not. So it's not really so much a scene as a moment. And it's when all the girls who are not part of the Slayerettes mm. um, start to get their power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When that little girl with the baseball bat oh, yeah. goes up to, she pulls her, she and swings her bat back with all the confidence in the world and gets that sly smile on her face. It just, it, it makes me so happy for all of the, the fans who watch this that see themselves as a part of this fandom and how important the show has been. I know it doesn't like make a lot of sense, but I just, I get like such warm fandom feelings uh, in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, did I call on everyone? Now I can't remember if I called on everyone. <laughs> Ian, it's your turn. Okay. My turn. Great. Ian, what's your favorite scene? Um, I, I, it's a tie for me that my two favorite moments are exactly what Ashley mentioned. Like the, the Sarah Michelle Geller's delivery of get out of my face and then, like that, like you said, the way she catches that scythe and just fucking knocks those uber vamps over. Ooh, chef's kiss, perfect. Yeah. But also the the speech for me, I, I like Dana mentioned, like seeing all the girls. Like I do love that. I do love the the one girl who catches the hand of like her father or whatever that's going to hit her. Yes, like yeah. shit. That is that is good. That is empowering. That makes me feel like I can do anything. Um, yeah, and it's like very weird for a finale that is the final episode of my favorite show to make me like feel good. Right. Like I still cried and I'm still so emotional about it, but it makes me feel good. And that doesn't often happen. Um, Mm -hmm. And this does a good job of doing that. Uh, What grade do you give it? uh, Kirsten? A. Zach? Plus. A plus. Yeah. Ashley? A plus, 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 plus. Seven pluses for seven seasons. Aww. Thank you. I love this finale. Adam? Um, you know, B. No, I'm just going to A. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, are you an A? I'm an A, yeah. Okay, yeah. Just scare uh, everybody for a moment. Please. Uh, the, <laughs> rest, the way you all are going on, come on. Go <laughs> the way you F-words are going on. Uh, Dana, what grade do you give it? <laughs> and finally, the grade I never got in high school a plus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I am exactly the same. A plus. Um, <laughs> I I just like I I understand the flaws of season seven. I really do. I talked about them a lot this season, but like fuck, this season lands the finale so mm-hmm. well that like mm-hmm. I I don't know many shows that land an ending as well as Buffy did. Um and like shows that I love. Like I love the Lost finale. I think Lost and Buffy have two of the best finales. I but I, there's other shows that like I love, I love to death. But like, like Veronica Mars. If you asked me mm-hmm. about that, the first season finale in season three, I think that's pretty crappy. And then the next season finale in the Hulu revival is awful. Um, I'm still trying to figure out their season finale. <laughs> yeah, like, and like, but that's a show that I love. Um, and I don't, I, I'm just used to season finales not quite making the landing. And I, I just think even the little, the little issues we had, it just lands right. Like it really does. Mm-hmm. Um. Thank you all so much. This is wild that we are done, Buffy. Um, I I can't thank all of you. I got one thing enough. to say. I want to say something before you end it. All okay. right, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I was a kid when I started watching this, and so when you know that young, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. 
Buffy felt like she was just mine. Like she was mm-hmm. mine. I felt this very strong bond with her more than any character I'd ever felt before. And then when I got older, I found this whole community of people from like all different walks of life who love her as much as I do. And, you know, we're a community who will forever be bonded by, you know, because we, we understand like the cookie dough speech. We understand right. what that means. We understand the lessons that Buffy has given us and to, continues to give us throughout life about love, hope, perseverance, vulnerability, strength. You know, she is 25 years now, right? She arrived in Sunnydale 25 years ago and hasn't left her heart since. Yeah. Uh, and there's one thing that brings all of us together as Buffy fans, and that is Buffy Summers is our hero. I love her with all my heart, and child Zach would be through the roof that he gets to talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer oh. with a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Zach, now That's you're making me cry. Fuck. Well, right. I have something to say. Can you believe it? <laughs> Get your Andrew speeches out. Everybody got yeah, it. All right, hold on, hold on. I want to thank Ian. Yes. Dana. Ian, you mm-hmm. have spent hundreds and maybe even thousands of hours putting this podcast together. You have done it with grace and kindness and humility and vulnerability. And you always want to have people with different thoughts and ideas and I have been honored to be a part of this. Um, I didn't watch Angel, so I can't, you know, speak to that. But I hope to be a part of things in, in the future with you. But thank you for making all of us feel special mm-hmm. and for bringing Buffy and all of its amazing complexities and goodness and sometimes badness and craziness to so many fans across the world. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you. As as uh, almost as much as Buffy have brought a community together yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, I made that whole speech about oh, myself, but now it's about Ian. Yeah. This episode yeah. is about Ian. Thanks, guys. I need to like think of something to make Ian cry now. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> um, I, this is a good one. Yeah, I don't know what to say now. I could say I'm very glad I was gonna have. <clears throat> I was going to have us do this on Zoom, and I'm very glad I didn't because I don't want you to see <laughs> how gross I am right now. Um, but uh, yes, Adam. I, I would just say, like, Wait, Adam, do you have something nice to say? <laughs> I do. I was, <laughs> um, like, you know, I echo what everybody else says, but also um, just in case anybody missed the beginning of the, this is not the end of Slayer Fest, so don't cancel your <laughs> Patreon accounts. So. <laughs> uh, there is going to be a lot more. <laughs> I just need to remind everybody of that. <laughs> has very, like, again, I, I, I established at the beginning of this episode that I am deeply physically uncomfortable with even the idea of finales. So um, <laughs> that's why I'm, I, that's why I've been behaving so coldly. Um, but I will say, yeah, this is, this is far from the end. So this is like a nice milestone in mm-hmm. the history of the greater Slayer Fest 98 experience but it is far from the end uh, in the end. And you're going to be doing many, many more great things. You are going to take a break. Yes. Um, But uh, you will be back with Buffy content and other content and other things. Yes. And there's, you know, between the time we get to now and Angel, Moon Knight will come out and there will be a couple of Marvel movies. So you'll probably be at least here in Adam on some of those. (laughs) Oh, I bet. Yeah. And if a female character somewhere, somehow is doing something (laughs) strong, Ian will cover it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, even if it, even if that strong thing is some sociopathic shit. <laughs> Wanda, we stand forever. Um, guys, I just, I really appreciate this. Um, but before we leave, we have, uh, I want to hear what everyone else has to say. Hi, this is Stacey Abrams. I think it was probably the only way you could end that show. Had it ended in the cave, had it ended with that last deceit, it would have been not only anticlimactic, but it wouldn't have been true to how the show started. Having them stand there, recognizing that ha- despite having defeated the biggest big bad they could, having saved you know humanity yet again, there's a pedestrian nature to what they do. That even with that victory, a new fight would come. And it may be a lesser fight that didn't require the activation of all the potentials and the decimation of all they loved and their favorite people, but they knew even in that moment, it wasn't over. And that's what Buffy is about. It's it's the, it's this pursuit and it's the constancy of the challenges, but it doesn't remove the joy of the moment and the genuine love and camaraderie of the friendships. 
And so I, I think the juxtaposition of them standing near bus, the school bus, the, you know, sort of wry reaction that Giles had and Buffy's glib yet very honest reaction. I think it was the perfect encapsulation of that show. Hi, I'm Ryan Houlihan, and I absolutely love Chosen as a finale for Buffy's journey. As Joseph Campbell taught us, there will be other heroes' journeys like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or Harry Potter, but to my knowledge at least, only Buffy's ended in such a satisfying way. Not only does our main character get what she's always been after, to not be alone in her fight, but the audience is also handed a canon, in-universe way to launch thousands, if not millions, of new slayers with new stories to tell, be that in a big-budget reboot or crowding the depths of internet fanfiction. In the end, Buffy was chosen because she chose herself. And along the way, she gave us permission to as well. Thomas Lank. Um, I will say that I did not, I, I did not know if I was going to make it to the end. And I was very excited. Like, you know, clearly we s- skip through all your lines and then you see if you're dead on your last line. Um, so I definitely did that with this episode. But and I was excited that I didn't get killed in the end because also at that time we thought, oh, well, I can then I can be on the spinoff or when it <laughs> yeah, comes <yeah>. back. <laughs> it's not, you guys, it's not happening. Listeners, it's not, it's not going to happen. Okay, so let's stop DMing me <laughs> about how, Andrew, you, you have a really great idea for a, a, a Ripper series with Andrew. It's not happening. Okay, so, um, yeah, I was just excited to to get to, to live and happy that I, because I, I was paranoid I would get killed before that point, um, but I was actually devastated by, um, by Anya's death. And I remember them talking about that it would be more devastating if it wasn't a big deal. People would be more upset if if it wasn't like a big, yeah, leading up to it, death, and then like lots of coverage. So apparently that's why it's just sort of like, and they just move past it and she's gone. I was just so devastated by that. That made me real sad. <laughs> I'm saying. Like, I, can, I can get serious, you guys. I'm not all just jokes and laughs. <laughs> What was your favorite part of filming that uh, finale, Tom? Um, my favorite part about filming the finale was, you know, it was all all of us. I just remember being on that school bus, <laughs> wherever we were filming out in the middle of nowhere. Um, that it was kind of, it was everybody. And I think that was one of the last things that we filmed. And because I was obviously a newcomer to the group, it just felt very, I felt as a, person who was, you know, uh, a a nerd and picked on a lot growing up and was never part of like the cool kids group. It was one of these moments in my life where I thought, oh my God, like I finally, I made it. Like I'm one of the cool people. I'm part of this group of actors, these like amazing, talented people that I respect. And like, I'm one of them for today. Anthony Oliveira. Uh, My memory of Chosen is watching it in my parents' basement, which is where I watched every episode of Buffy when it aired. Um, and But the part I remember most was as soon as it was over, logging on to the internet to Buffy's Domain of Delight, <laughs> where uh, I was one of the contributors and talking with all the people who had become my friends uh, in the years since. I Buffy was a major influence on my life. I ran away at one point just to hang out with the people uh, in the moment of great crisis in my own life, just to get away and uh, hang out with folks who also love this thing as much as I do. And that is really the gift Buffy has given me from when I was a lonely 16 year old to right now recording with Ian and Joe and everybody is the community this show has built for me. And for that, I'll always be grateful. Kali Rosha, wouldn't it be interesting? I, I had sort of never thought of this before, but I would love to have seen how for just generally have a relationship. That's a totally separate mm. issue. <laughs> Who could ever take that on? Um, but I guess, you know, I would like to have saved Anya and been friends with her. I mean, continued that relationship because I actually think we were really good friends together, you know, and I would yeah. like to see how that would have evolved. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Joe Reed. My memory of Chosen, watching Chosen the first time was this great and terrible expectation over how this show that I loved so much could 
end and how how it could possibly sort of leave on the note that maybe we all wanted it to and ultimately being satisfied and relieved and and contented with that look on Buffy's face at the very end as she sort of stares into what was once this hellmouth that was uh, her responsibility i there was so much trepidation going into this final episode i remember being devastated uh that anya died i remember being relieved that andrew didn't die relieved that faith didn't die and satisfied with with how buffy finally got to go out on her terms and this show that was such a big part of my life and was now over would be able to exist in my memory as uh, a complete object now and a little bit of i guess i felt a little bit of that relief as well for as much as i was going to miss the show it was it had ended well and and good for that buffy writer jana spenson hi jane hi so good to be here again i remember very little from the from being in the writer's <laughs> room uh i remember being told I don't remember if it was a discussion or if I was told that Anya would die. I think that's the thing I remember most vividly is the discussing of Anya and Andrew uh, and how they would how they would end up. The rest of it, it just sort of magically materialized. And I rewatched it this morning, first time I had watched it in probably decades. And it's fantastic. I was really struck by the way every single person is given their their moment, their send off. The redemption, oh, it's just lovely. Everybody gets an, their appropriate moment. And the Buffy in particular, that, that notion that she can finally set her burden down, it's, it's yeah. empowering in an atypical way. It's not, oh, she's been transformed into some kind of uber slayer. It's that, no, she's been able to hand it over. And I think that's so lovely. Uh, I, I was, it really struck me this time how lovely that is. How did you feel about Anya's death? I know because you especially had a lot of fun writing Anya. So how did you feel when you found out she was going to die? Well, it's the finale. She made it the whole way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I never, I never <laughs> let the death of a character, particularly in a supernatural show, you know, every, they were afraid to tell me that when they came up with the idea of killing Jonathan. And I was like, it's fine. Trust me. He'll be back. And then he <laughs> went back, you know, the, because he, because the first pretended to be him. And then we saw him in the flashbacks in in Storyteller. So um, I, I never take a character's death too seriously. Um, she was a vengeance demon. If we wanted to bring her back, if there had been more seasons, if she wanted to come back, we would have found a way. So uh, and sometimes death is the most beautiful ending for a character. Andrew telling Xander, oh, she, she died protecting me. Like that gives Andrew a moment. It gives Xander a moment. It gives you so much payoff. It's, you don't want to lose that. Is there anything that you wish that if y'all had more time, you could have included in the finale or not really? <laughs> it's hard to look at it and say, oh, you know what? This is missing. It's got everything. It's amazing what's packed into that hour. And it's got just shocking, wonderful, lovely moments. This spike sacrifice. Oh my God. F and funny. It's, it, it isn't one of those things where you drop the humor because this one's important. No, the tone is consistent. Yeah. It's lo and it, that moment, that act moment where Buffy says, we're going to win. That's huge. And I was thinking about it as I watched yeah. it. If I had written it, I would have said, I think, I think we can win. And she says, we're going to win. Normally you'd be told, you know, don't take the drama out of it. Don't make it an absolute we're going to win, but it but it works. It absolutely works. It's so much more powerful. And I was struck by the the her leadership because one of the things that I thought was so amazing about that show was that nobody ever doubted her ability to be the leader. She was so clearly the leader. Everybody on her team turned to her without question. She was the leader and no, no, and, and she's the leader right up till the end. When, when she says a thing, you see the weight that it carries. And I love that. 
So I gotta ask before we close out real quick then, they do kick Buffy out of the house like two episodes prior to this. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, it's sort of like you need low notes for the high notes to shimmer. You know, in screenwriting, it's the it's the long dark night of the soul before the big victory. And what was it like uh, bringing Eliza Dustrew's faith back? Yes, to bring faith back, to bring back, you know, Angel. And, you know, it's, there's something wonderful about that the gang's all back together. It's important. Hi, I'm Kimberly Ann Southwick. Oh, the Buffy finale. So many notes. It's one of the better slash best series finales that there are. Star Trek The Next Generation being the best uh, of all time. Anyway, uh, because there's closure. But there's not too much closure. It leaves it open, obviously, for us to envision our heroes, minus one, in the future. Anya's death, maybe unnecessary. Uh, so many great lines. So much of that, like, legit 90s-ish. I know it's the early 2000s at this point, but still, like, girl power. Uh, but, like, made real? A lot of good magic happens here. There's so many good little scenes, too. It doesn't lose its sense of humor. And man, did I cry <laughs> watching it and then rewatching it today. Monica was Sabreen. Um, What I remember is how much I was dreading watching it. When I fell in love with TV shows, I fall hard and... um. That cast was so important to me that I remember just like for months before watching it, just being devastated because they were going to leave my life. Mm -hmm. And then I watched the end, which was both so beautiful and so empowering and then sent me into a massive depression because they left my life. But, you know, I still watch it. Yeah. But I, it's just funny to me because it's like, I hate endings. <laughs> I hate them so much when I love characters. So um, my inability for closure is what I remember most. But um, they did. I thought the ending was beautiful. I remember watching um, Captain Marvel and weeping yeah. when, when the flashback when she's like hitting the ball. And then there was a little girl hitting the ball when I rewatched it. And I'm like, ah! I'm crying again. <laughs> Little girls can be slayers or superheroes. <laughs> that will always make me cry. Hey, I'm Alistair Patton, and these are my closing thoughts on Chosen, the last episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The first time I saw this episode, I'm pretty sure I bawled my eyes out. And I've done that every single time I've watched this episode since then. It's an incredibly like emotional event uh, to watch this episode. I like that we were able to give time to each of the cast members so that we could have, especially like our, our Scoobies so that we could have a kind of a final farewell. For me, this show really just shows what it is in this character work, you know, from when the characters come into the show and who they are now, the seventh season leaving the show. Like for example, we have Anya who came in third season and is not, a person or a demon who would do anything for anybody and then ending the series as she is, you know, sacrificing herself for somebody else, for a human. Um, it's an incredibly emotional scene. It's actually probably the most traumatizing scene in that episode. I love this show so much. Um, it's a pillar of who I am. Buffy taught me to be strong. She taught me what strength means and how you can share your strength. So, Buffy, I love you. and Thank you so much for the show. And to everybody who created the show at had a part in it, thank you so much. Hey, this is Angela Rockstar. And I remember watching the Chosen finale when it first aired. And I remember thinking, yes, Spike, because I'm a Spike stan, getting his redemption arc there because he deserved, he really did. And I also remember how badass Willow was and just the power and that spell that gave all the potential slayers in the world the power. Yes. And all I kept thinking was, oh, my God, this is going to make such an incredible girl power spinoff of a show where they can just go all over the world. They don't I mean, Buffy is important, but like they could do it with or without 
and just going around finding the potential, the slayers that had been given their power and, and having a story of each one. And I, I really believed that then. And now when I watch it, I'm still like, you know, this could still work. <laughs> I still believe that maybe that could happen. Um, such a good, phenomenal series in a lot of ways. And I guess those are my thoughts. It's such a good series. I just started having my 13 year old watch because I thought that she needed to know that into every generation, a slayer is born. And I think that's really what a lot of us are lacking in our lives right now. <laughs> uh, as far as Chosen goes, I think, I think it was a great series finale. I think it did everything that it needed to do and hit all the points correctly. And I'm just beginning Buffy again right now. So I'm, I'm a Buffy fan <laughs> forever. Hey, I'm Summer Bischel and Chosen is a finale that makes me cry every time I watch it, literally every time I watch it. And I've seen it more times than I can probably count. It's one of those episodes that like, I'll admit gives me strength when I feel like there's something that I can't overcome. There's so many powerful moments, um, specifically when Buffy gets up to keep fighting. It's like, it's one of those moments where it's almost like she doesn't care if she has lost, she's still going to go down fighting. And I think that's the most heroic moment for her it, it it almost like it's such a heroic moment and and such a hero moment that it almost doesn't matter if the battle is going to be won because she was so committed to fighting and I think that's I mean that's that's a hero so I, I love this episode and I could talk about it for ages hi this is Philip Ellis and I don't actually remember the first time I saw the Buffy finale. I know it must have been weeks or maybe even months after it aired in the States because of the delay we used to have getting American TV. And I'm fairly certain that the internet spoiled the big reveal of every Slayer in the world being activated. But I kind of don't care. Just because in my mind, season seven's absolute slog of repetitive, dour storytelling all became worth it with that final episode. It's like we were all trapped in the same dark, airless room for a year, and then finally somebody let us out into the light. Here's the thing about Chosen, it's not actually necessarily interested in resolving the story that the show has been telling all season, um, and I'm fine with that because, let's be honest, the, the plottiness is the worst part of season seven. But what the finale does do perfectly is resolve the character arcs that have been going on since you know, the very first episode. Um, so, you know, we have Buffy finally learning to not be the, you know, world on your shoulders, loner weirdo that, you know, sort of constantly uh, separates herself and detaches herself from her support network only to, you know, then regret it. Um, and then look at Willow. They finally, finally <laughs> ditch the magic is drugs thing. And instead, uh, they finally figure out how to how to tell a story about power and they make power all about intention because when Willow was using magic selfishly or for revenge it begat corruption and pain and suffering but when she uses it benevolently uh, to empower all these young girls to stand up and make the world a, a safer better place for themselves and for others that's when she's able to kind of wipe her slate clean and, and really step into her utmost power and it's a it's a gorgeous moment just seeing the the white hair and the and the white light and and sort of that goddess image it's 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 beautiful um it's a moment that works on buffy but wouldn't work on angel i think because buffy as a show is all about the black and white and while that's simplistic and frustrating at times because there is nuance i think that in terms of a finale the broad strokes are fine and i still get goosebumps every time she says oh my goddess because i'm basic <laughs> I also love the little arcs that Faith goes on with Robin. I think, I personally believe that any man who identifies as a nice guy deserves to have his name on some sort of list, but I will make an exception for him uh, because he's beautiful. And I love that the last time we see Faith on screen, she's beginning to open up to the possibility of a healthy relationship for, you know, let's be honest, the first time in her life uh, and same. And I think ultimately that's what I love most about this finale as a whole. It's that 
after going through hell together for years, these characters can all finally see the light at the end of the tunnel and the, the possibility of a, a new and better world. And now James Marsters on Chosen. Hello to Slayer Fest 98. Thanks for asking me to take part in this Buffy uh, celebration after 25 years. Um, I remember uh, the finale mostly because I was saved by the director. I think it was Joss uh, in the scene where, um, you know, Spike is saving the world. Uh, and the thing was, I was being lit on fire. And uh, I wasn't really being lit on fire, although we did do that earlier in the uh, in the show, uh, not in real life. It was just a bunch of lights, and they were going to add the fire, you know, with computers later. Um, but I was arguing, look, man, I'm on fire. I don't care if I'm a vampire. That hurts. So I should be responding in some way, like, you know... <laughs> Uh, I can't just act like it's not happening. I've got to be in some kind of pain, right? And uh, the director just kept saying, no, play it. <laughs> play it like the most important thing is Buffy, and this moment is Buffy, so you're not feeling the pain. I'm like, that's that's not credible, you know? And uh, I just cannot imagine how bad that scene would have been if I'd have gotten my way. Can you imagine? I love you, Spike. Ugh. I know you don't, but thanks for seeing it. I mean, like, it's just, oh, so bad. Um, and so there's a real difference between what what makes sense to an actor and what looks looks good on screen. And, uh, I, you know, that scene would have had no poetry. It would have had no lift had I uh, gotten my way uh, and been in pain. So thank you to the directors of Buffy. Saved my bacon. Hey, this is Matthew Rodriguez. I remember watching the finale for the first time, the time it aired, and just being really kind of stunned in a lot of ways. Um, it's a stunning piece of television. I mean, and this is, it's 2003. It's so pre what we think of television now. I mean, Buffy pumped out 22 episodes a year to varying degrees of quality, obviously, but like they really pulled off a finale for a show that had so many themes and so many characters and so many things to balance. I think it was a reminder to, as the series ended of like why we had spent so much time with these people. And I felt like the finale was properly emotional it wasn't the plottiest finale and there was a lot of the, you know, like we knew they were going to go down into the seal. We knew there was going to be a big fight and we wanted a big fight. We wanted to see Buffy in like one of her toughest battles and we got what we wanted. And I felt like obviously there's sadness. I mean, seeing Anya die was very sad, but I felt almost like held and coddled by the writers. Like I was, you know, it, it just was such an, it was so well done. It was so well done. I just, I only have positive memories of, of watching it and reacting to it. It's Evan Ross Katz. Um, first of all, congratulations on powering through all 144 episodes of the series, an incredible feat. And uh, I really enjoyed listening to you and your guests commentaries throughout um, okay, so my thoughts on Chosen, the series finale of Buffy. You know, I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10 in that I think it is a relatively memorable finale with some really strong moments. I think my favorite of which would definitely be the conversation between Angel and Buffy, because I feel like it was the writers, specifically one writer, uh, recognizing the fact that fans kind of, there was some fan service necessary in the series finale. And I, I appreciated them understanding that and giving it us that. Um, and yeah, I appreciated the callback in the hallway between the four original stars of the show, hearkening back to, um, the harvest. I thought that was a, a fun little throwback. Although there is some like questionable dialogue. I know like, I think it's Willow and Xander. There's something about like shopping. They say something about shopping and it just feels very like they wouldn't actually say that. Um, but obviously there's some less than great parts like Anya dying, um, that I don't love. And, uh, I think it did the best with what it could, but I am not a big fan of season seven on the whole. So I feel like the series finale 
had to wrap up a lot of season seven plot, um, in addition to sort of wrapping up the overall arc of the story. But I think they sucked the landing. I'm really, I was really glad to see, uh, Dawn at the end. I was glad to see Faith make it out. Um, and I think it was a satisfying series finale, all things considered. So seven out of 10, I don't think it's the highest point of the show, but it's nowhere near the lowest. And, uh, if it's on TV, I am definitely staying on the channel. You know what I mean? Anyway, thank you for allowing me to rant. And uh, again, congratulations on finishing the series. All right. Well, thank you all so much. This has been quite the journey. We also will be back next week. Uh, Zach will be hosting, co-hosting with me. We're going to be doing the season wrap up because we always have a season ra- recap um and kirsten will be co-hosting the uh 25th anniversary of welcome to the hellmouth with me um and yeah but if you like slayer fest 98 i'm sure at this point you know where to find us but you can find us on social media at slayer fest x 98 on all social media platforms tiktok instagram twitter and you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify and youtube and anywhere else you get your podcasts you can support us on patreon which would be very much appreciated uh, my mother and I still have three more episodes of Buffy to watch together over there. Um, and if you want to follow me, I am at Ian X Carlos. Kirsten, where can everyone find you? You can find me on the shelves of your local bookstore, uh, continuing the story of new chosen ones in Slayer and Chosen, <laughs> which is very uh, aptly titled, <laughs> <laughs> or online at, at Kirsten White or at author Kirsten White. And Adam, where can everyone find you? You can find me on all socials at the Adam Sass. You can also find me on your bookshelves wherever you buy your books with my uh, with my YA thriller debut, Surrender Your Sons, and then this September my uh, YA rom com debut, uh, The Ninety Nine Boyfriends of Micah Summers. And Dana, where can everyone find you? You can also find me on a dusty bookshelf somewhere <laughs> in a in a lesbian bookstore <laughs> in a. In the basement. Um, <laughs> but you can also find me working to create sustainable queer media at Dana Pickley on Twitter and Instagram. That's 2 C's one l And Zach, where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me and Ian co-hosting a, a podcast all about horror. We, we say talk show now because it's a video format, all that. We can, you can find us on Twitter at My Bloody Judy. Uh, YouTube, My Bloody Judy, and My Bloody Judy on all podcasting platforms. And Ashley, where can everyone find you on social media? You can find me uh, hopping around Twitter at MythTaken314. All right, everyone. Well, that is a wrap on Buffy Season 7. We will see you all next time. Bye.